Hello everybody and welcome to Encounter Roleplay. My name is Will and today we are back with Numenera Age of the Awoken. And uh, this is episode, I believe episode 9, I want to say. 9! Uh, and so only good things can happen. It could be, even be 10. 10? Yeah, it could be 10. I can't maths. Yeah, anyway. Yeah, fuck me, Jesus. Uh, well, uh, if you've missed any previous episodes, of course you can catch them up on YouTube, but we're gonna go around, find out who our cast are, who they are playing, and of course do a recap for those of you who don't remember or just need a little refresh, or who might be new. Um, so, let's dive in first of all with uh, player Josh today. How's it going, Josh? Oh. Hello? Hello! Yeah. Hey! Hey! hey. Yeah, no, it's good. Uh, it's, yeah, it's going good on... I've nice. got my mug, my Warren Davis mug, yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was, that was the longest present. <laughs> the thousand follower mark mug. <laughs> Gets it at 12k. <laughs> yeah, it was good. It was good. No, um, yeah, it was good. Uh, yeah, me and Will, me and Will had, a, had, a, had a sesh over we the did. weekend. We did. We seshed. Bar. I was just explaining uh, Snake Oil Salesman with, with, <laughs> where we played with Gareth. <laughs> which was just terrible and nothing we can repeat on stream no um so yeah uh with relation to this i'm playing vaz uh vaz reynolds who is a big heavy hitty dude uh everyone else is more into like the complicated shit like uh you know tactics and uh, vaz vaz has a one trap mind most of the time which is you know smash or befriend so that's that's his two mm -hmm. settings so uh he tries All to those other players going. are into like depth and character building yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> and then there's mike who didn't actually build a character he had he had the dm build him a character yep which has never gone wrong for any player ever <laughs> so yeah um, i'm I, I try and keep the party grounded as they do terrible terrible things like for example uh Take a human body apart for no good reason, Mike. Yeah. There was a great reason. No, yeah? there is. Do you, want, do, you want to, do you want to explain that good reason and who Domino is? We'll, we'll do it. Yeah. yeah. Mike, tell us, talk to us about Domino. Thanks for the big deal for the host. Uh, so yeah, Josh, the, you want to boost your volume reason. up again as well. Okay, cool. So the reason was because that guy was erasing the data sphere, and that's my jam, so I had to chop him into pieces. Yeah. Uh, also, I was a war robot. Let's not, let's not focus on that. I'm a nice guy now. I'm just trying yeah. to hang out. Uh, but yeah, my weekend was awesome. I got to hang out with the big deal himself. Uh, wow. We went he to, let you uh, in his presence? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You yeah. two in the same room? Uh, How did I that? Just, <laughs> I just, I actually just, I just watched him sleep for a while. Uh, <laughs> That's not true. Wow. How much XP um, do you have to spend if I Trainzy can doesn't sleep. To hang out with Trainzy? Yeah. Yeah. No, no, that's not true. You know, Kane, Trainzy's, you know, uh, his detail, his protection detail that take him everywhere because he's such a big deal. You know, they wouldn't let you near. I mean, if you followed Twitter, you'd know that his protection detail lost him this weekend. <laughs> what? <laughs> um, but yeah, so we had a good time at PAX. A lot of people saw Chords, saw Brian from Exploding, uh, Exploding Dice, a bunch of people. So that was pretty cool. But yeah, I am back here God on bless. this uh, chilly Monday. Uh, to play some Numenera, and I'll be reprising my role as dot, 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 Domino, who is a robot who until recently had no memory of his past life, but it turns out he's a war machine from the Eighth World. Uh, mm. And he just continuously fucks shit up unintentionally, and the party hate, loves to hate him. Loves to hate him. <laughs> yeah. Do we? <laughs> <laughs> Not sure. I'm definitely, definitely so, sensing hate. <laughs> yep. All right, then. Uh, we also have Tool School back today. How's it going, Tool School? Going good. How are you guys doing? I am uh, excited to be back again. It's a Monday. It is yay daylight whatever time. And um, <laughs> yeah, uh, fucking. But uh, yeah, no, I'm back. I am playing Tempest, who is the best described. He's an anthropomorphic uh, displacer beast. Um, he is sort of finding his way in the world um, with this group of folks who um, a lot of times he doesn't understand, but. Uh, I guess is learning something from them. Maybe, maybe learning, learning who, how learning how not to be uh, a good person uh, from this group. But most importantly, he is trying to just find some place to belong. And uh, Madame Bulvery's was that place until it was destroyed. And then our nice little hideout was that place. And now it seems like it's being destroyed. And then you know, last episode, uh, dot 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 Domino attacked him. And uh, <laughs> So Tempest is a little uh oh yeah a little uh, confused as to uh what all is uh 
<laughs> what all's up? So absolutely. we shall see. Yeah, absolutely. I remind you guys where you can find your uh, each of our character sheets online there on the website uh, in case you're looking for them. Uh, and last but not least, Trainzy, talk to me about Ada. Talk Ada to me. So, so yeah, Ada. Um, she's kind of in an odd spot. She's actually she a couple episodes ago destroyed her mirror multi-universe clone that with with unknown consequences and she's kind of lugging around the glass but beyond that her strategies and ideas about people are changing and and both the softer side avery which is humanistic and the alien side robotic side ada they're kind of coming to fuse um and it's it's for for both strategic reasons and for friendship question mark mm -hmm. so it's a it's an interesting time in her life and uh i think she's going to really evolve in the story yeah absolutely uh and for my own part i am playing jan Ulrich. um yes yes i'm now playing the dm god damn it Kuni. um I, I continue my tpk streak onto this game <laughs> uh, but no, i play jan Ulrich, uh who is a freedom fighter stroke rebellion uh leader Stroke terrorist, um, a lot of stroking involved of Yan. He's uh, essentially he's mm -hmm. lost his wife to the government officials, and now he's trying to get payback um, by bringing down their government and and taking them down. He believes that all mutants should live uh, as equally as everyone else, probably a little bit more equally, really, than everyone else. Um, now that he thinks about it, um, but yeah, he's uh, willing to do anything to get the job done. He's a de facto leader of this little faction here as well as the rebellion on a whole uh and of course mitch is our dm tonight so mitch i guess we'll do a little recap then hook some plugs and then fucking go for it sounds uh, good to me yeah i'm excited to uh, be back uh, daylight savings time aside uh it's always a always a rough morning first couple days after but we're uh, here good to go uh rested and excited slash anxious to see uh, how this interrogation goes uh, so for those who are just joining us uh, tonight, who maybe missed the last episode, uh, this little mutant revolution uh, that our party is leading in the capital city of Seda, one of the few remaining safe kingdoms uh, in a world uh, being torn apart by a battle between gods, uh, or at least that's what the people believe. Uh, the city of Seda, you know, very suspicious to begin with, even before this revolution began, of folks with abilities or powers. They were associated with, with the gods and, and this cataclysm that seems to be going on out there, uh, and they wanted nothing really to do with that. Uh, but of course, all of the refugees and folks flooding into this, you know, this last remaining safe kingdom uh, started to force the issue a little bit. So uh, our party has been leading this resistance, uh, this literally underground um, movement that is taking in uh, sort of folks who've been warped or changed or mutated by uh, these strange sort of magical shards that appeared over the last 30 or 40 years. Um, and they've been building up a, a bit of a community underground, this sort of secret hideout they have uh, near an underground lake where this oracle resides under the city. Um, but there's been some issues. There's been a few jobs here and there, a couple uh, interrupted executions, uh, the, the breakouts or the raid of a prison ship uh, to free mutant prisoners. Uh, and so the local authorities uh, have really started to crack down. You've got active rioting in the streets against mutants. Uh, this is, of course, swelling the ranks of mutants within this underground cave network. So they're running out of space. Uh, as it were. Um, and last week, the party realized that things were getting so bad that individuals who lived above the city, who didn't identify sympathetically with, with the mutants or the supers, you know, whatever they're to be called, um, were going to such lengths to sort of insulate themselves against these witch hunts to show that they were for sure on the side of the consul, you know, the local government. They're not one of these mutants, uh, that they were smearing blood, uh, supposedly the blood of mutants, uh, over every archway and doorway. Uh, that they could to sort of make this show. Now, of course, there can't be enough mutants still up in the streets, uh, given how these tensions have been bubbling for quite some time. So where this blood is coming from, no one's really sure, but that's at least the gesture uh, that mm -hmm. folks uh, seem to feel that they need to make uh, to uh, assert their allegiance. So things are coming to a bit of a head. This friction is no longer you know, small and sectarian. It's, it's very much uh, now between two camps, uh, those above and those below. And so last week, <clears throat> our party, trying to wrap their head around this mysterious secret that potentially the, the consul's wife knows. Uh, she's gone missing, you know, rich and noble folks have been uh, kidnapped and murdered uh, in search of this missing woman who knows some devastating secret uh, about the consul himself. 
He's been deploying uh, what seemed to be super powered or mutant uh, agents of his own, you know, going against uh, all of his rhetoric and propaganda. Uh, he's so desperate to find uh, his estranged wife. And there's also been weird, strange, intradimensional stuff that the party is trying to wrap their head around, but it's it's been difficult. Domino and, and Ada sort of taking the lead on that. Uh, and so the last episode, of course, the, the party went out of the city uh, to investigate what they heard was the chief court scientist or the consul's leading researcher into all things interdimensional was apparently investigating uh, this pond where uh, Jan and Vaz themselves witnessed some kind of strange portal phenomenon that you can see in a previous episode uh, a little bit back. And so the party did manage to uh, secure this, this Brogdon, this scientist, uh, and had taken him to a relatively secluded cave uh, where they intended to do all manner of unseemly things to him. Uh, but we will uh, dive into that after some hooks and plugs. Yeah, no, absolutely. So if you're looking forward to today's episode as I am, then uh, you can, of course, interact with tonight's show as much as you did the last one. Uh, last session, of course, led to a total party kill for all of the players. Uh, we went down um, and permanently losing... A lot of limbs, a lot of players, and a lot of NPCs as well, of course. Uh, that wasn't actually chat's doing. That was all on the party, in fact. Um, chat just simply decided not to save them uh, by making a blue wizard appear and who just made all of their clothes turn blue rather than saving them. Uh, so if you <laughs> if you want uh, to... <laughs> Go ahead. No, just that chat chose to yeah. intervene just to show that they could have saved them. They could have done, but they decided not to. Exactly. Yeah, the power that you guys have is very important. Thank you for the triangles, guys. Thank you both. Uh, so, first of which being, if you haven't followed, go ahead, hit that follow button and join us. Just two followers away from 30, where you guys get to decide anything which will happen next in our campaign. Could be a good thing, could be a bad thing. You guys will get to decide in what we call these viewer decisions. Uh, and, of course, we hit 20 retweets on this tweet. We'll have another viewer decision and two new subscribers or patrons on Patreon. Patreon, and the same shit will happen. Of course, you can uh, now burn your money into the ether, into role-playing games, even more readily you can do now uh, on a kind of role-play by giving players nat 1s, nat 20s, wild magic surges uh, via donations and cheers. Um, so, cheers to that, I say, and let us begin episode 10 of Age of the Awoken. All right, sounds good. So, just as a reminder, uh, I guess to, to wrap up the recap, not only did the party manage to uh, to kidnap uh, Mr. Brogdon, uh, but there was a bit of a, a bit of a hiccup that happened. And Tempest, you alluded to this. So, uh, Brogdon, of course, was the scientist who had captured and investigated, experimented, uh, you know, pseudo tortured Domino earlier on in the season. Uh, and so, Domino went into something of a rage, just trying to kill uh, and avenge sort of what he had suffered uh, by killing the scientist. Thankfully, Tempest managed to get away, knocking. Uh, domino into this sort of intra-dimensional pond that had been uh, bubbling up uh, out of the crossroads. That pond, of course, birthed, thanks to chat, uh, yet another, second one of this season, uh, a mecha kraken creature of sorts uh, that Domino very uh, courageously, and uh, I think burned a hell of a lot of points, nearly dropped unconscious for it, uh, did manage to subdue at least long enough to send back to its dimension, uh, tapping into the data sphere uh, to get the information he required. But then Domino, you just escaped getting sucked into that uh, that home dimension of the Mecha Kraken yourself, uh, and you came away with that strange wound on your leg. Now, you have a couple patches now, so I just want to like recap a little bit. So Domino is, is a mech. Domino is this humanoid... Uh, robot, this automaton from the eighth world uh, that has no power source, and that's that's key. That's important. One of these magical, you know, presumed to be divine sky shards struck Domino, giving him sentience. So he's got a bit of a Pinocchio thing going on, but it's been getting more dramatic as you suffered uh, slight injuries to your sort of metal exoskeleton from the initial bomb that the party set off at the execution, and that bomb, of course turned all of the you know citizens who were present into these reptilian mutants so you've got like patches of reptile scales on your arms and you now have this kind of semi-translucent gelatinous patch of flesh on your left thigh it's not quite sprouting tentacles yet but you are quite literally turning into a real boy um and that's something to keep in mind uh, it doesn't really affect your programming or consciousness yet uh but it uh, it's definitely gonna something to consider down the road as that's getting strange uh so the party sort of mm. split 
as we left, we have uh, Vaz and Ada inside this cave with Brogdon, the scientist. Brogdon, I think, is still in the handout, Will. You can pull up for chat. Um, his little uh, profile pic there is yeah. LinkedIn. Uh, so Ada and Vaz are in that cave. Jan and Tempest are outside of the cave with a couple of those Traporo, those shepherds who, uh, you know, Jan has a bit of a connection with. They may be indicated where to come uh, to find a bit of a secluded area to do mm -hmm. some potentially noisy torturing. Uh, and Domino, you're you're sort of en route. So we'll come back to Domino uh, in a minute. You'll be able to interact with uh, Jan and Tempest outside of this cave. Uh, but I think everybody wants to start with this interrogation. So I guess Ada yeah. and Vaz I don't want to hear set, the, set the scene. You're in a cave. There's no furniture. Describe how you would like to at least set Brogdon up for this torture using whatever gear you have. I don't know if someone's got ropes. Also, or... also I, sh I should note, we've just hit fur two of Dr. Chunks and Kitty Licker. Thank you guys for following. I don't know if you want to bring in a VD now or you want to bring it in later, whenever is good with me. We'll, uh, we'll get it in during this interrogation for sure. Maybe. All right. I'll set up good music for you guys. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Okay. Um, I would suggest uh, that we, basically I want, kind of want him sitting uh easy access to his entire body if you know what i mean Tra transy nose <laughs> yeah transy let's let's not lie this wow. is not the first time we've tried some transy knows how to access a body yeah exactly. all right to access mm -hmm. their body yeah. yeah so um i don't know ada i'm gonna let ada set him up um i'm just gonna uh Get, get some things sorted on my end. So you you can have him like you can set him up and be Ada for a little bit, and then I'll I'll come over. We'll do the good cop bad cop of Cool. Uh, so as it stands, yeah. Unless you tell me otherwise, uh, we'll start this conversation with him either in a sitting position or standing there. He's got his hands at his side. He's got uh, you know tons of doodads all over him. He is a bit of a new and Aaron fanatic. Uh, he's got robes, packs. He's got pouches, etc. The only thing he's missing is his big book. Uh, that presumably is off to the side of the cave uh, that was with him uh, when uh, Tempest snatched him. Okay, cool. Um, well, I claim I guess... Tempest has the book and left it, unless I left it behind. I don't know why. Yeah, yeah. No, no, that's fine. Yeah. I'm, I'm okay yep. with him having the book. Um, you sort of know a bit more about what that shit is. So um, I'm just going to walk over to him. Uh, is he awake? Uh, yeah, he never dropped consciousness. Uh, okay. He was sort of enveloped in Tempest's tentacles, so he didn't have much by way of maneuvering. He did stop screaming after a while because uh, it didn't seem to be doing much. Um, so he's maybe a little bit coarse. Uh, but other than that, he hasn't hasn't really been hurt. Uh, Domino springboarded mm -hmm. into the tent, and this guy booked it, uh, at which point he was snatched up by uh, Tempest's griffin, Mount Gora. Okay. Um, I'm going to sort of, like, crouch in front of him. And uh, start, you know, I'm gonna take some of my heavy gear off because you know this could be this could be exhausting, like beating the fuck out of someone wearing loads of armor and stuff. It's tiring. It's nice to be able to just take your time. So uh, Vaz, like, while he's like taking like his pack off and his like his massive fucking ridiculous cable gun off and puts his glaive down, he says to the guy, uh, "I don't know if you're comfortable or not. Really, that's not a priority, but." You know, we want to get this over with as quick as possible. So, um, uh, just let me know if there's anything you need other than obviously being let go or the suffering to stop. I mean, I will tell you right now, this is all on you. All I need is uh, some information out of you. Um, see that one over there? She she does this for fun. I do this for a job. This is my calling as it were this is you know it, it pays good money and uh and i've got a lot of experience so i want you to know this is nothing personal um i'm gonna probably start off with the uh the torture and uh i'll tell you right now you'll probably walk away from what i do to you it's gonna hurt like nothing you've ever felt before but you you stand a chance to walk away from this this is the sort of thing you, you know heals um if you don't provide any sort of information. You're not cooperative. Uh, I, you know, don't feel like you're really playing ball with me. Then I'm going to hand you over to her. Now, the change there goes from me being able to put a bag over your head, knock you unconscious, drop you off in the city somewhere in the middle of nowhere. Nice, discreet. You don't need to know anything more about us. 
we look like good guys because, you know, we released a prisoner. We didn't kill a prisoner. That's good PR for us. Uh, and you guys, you, you get to continue living. So that's that's option A. Option B is uh, she starts working on you. Now, I'm not going to lie. Uh, once she starts working on you, we can't release you anymore. So it really comes down to how much pain you want to go through before you, you, you convince us that, you know, we should allow you to die. So it's really, you've got time with me um, and time with her. And the more we head towards her section, the more you're going to find out what someone who um, does this for fun as opposed to does this for job, how that, how that differs, okay? So I'm, I'm trying to be reasonable. I don't particularly want us to hate each other. I mean, obviously, I understand the resentment and stuff, but at the end of the day, try to understand that as long as you cooperate with me, she doesn't lay a finger on you, and it's probably for the best. I think uh, I think Ada will um, have walked up to Vez's shoulder and kind of did the you know the tap on the the opposite side of his direction, and uh, <laughs> in that time. She's going to jet a spear between two ribs and and jump on it and kind of break, like, the two ribs as it's, like, inserted into him. And she's going to look at him, don't waste our time. And she steps away I, and lets... It took and me then a she, <laughs> second. I thought you just stabbed Vaz. It's like, the fuck? <laughs> like, it wouldn't surprise me with this party at all. Like, while Vaz is distracted, I just jam a spear in his ribs. Okay, cool. Right. Oh, and then and then I, I like step back and, and I, I I look at Baz who's now has his attention after being like distracted from the tap shoulder like, and then I just wave to him like continue, <laughs> go Baz, on. Like, Baz, sorry. Uh, so so as I guess we'll give a quick response here uh, or at least uh, of some kind. Uh, so Baz Brogdon was fairly non-responsive, not emotive as you were giving your uh, your spiel. Uh, he did pull off his monocle and seemed to sort of mechanically sort of clean it, you know, breathe some uh, some hot oh, air onto it. He's tied up. There's no way. Oh, you've tied up his hands? Yeah, All right. yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. So, uh, Dill, hands tied behind, uh, no, cool. tied in front of him, sorry, and uh, ankles tied together. But apart from cool. that... Then, uh, then he will just be sort of looking through you, I guess is the way to describe it. Not really listening, definitely not sweating or nervous uh, quite yet. Uh, And then, of course, he gets stabbed uh, in one of the ribs and has uh, that space jabbed through as Ada jumps, uh, cracking into his ribs. So, of course, he kind of doubles over. Seems to be trying to hold his cool, but Josh, go on. Okay. Right. Uh, Ada, give me some room because this you're not going to want to be on the receiving end of this. And uh, he's going to take some of the spare cabling that he has that uh, used to plug into his battery. Good cop, take, bad cop. Uh, some metal cabling. It's just um, bad cop, bad cop. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, bad you started the violence? Oh, I can join in now too. Yeah. <laughs> um, and uh, I'm not gonna, this is just metal cabling. It's not particularly, it's not too heavy, but I mean, it's that got that fineness to it that's it's, it whips real nice through the air. Um, and he just says, uh, okay, uh, you let me know when you want me to stop and uh, start talking. And okay. I'm going to whip this guy across the shins. And this guy's a scientist, so I'm going to presume that he's not particularly... So right against the bone in his shins with a metal cable. You don't need to get it. You don't need to stab him or anything. That will hurt more than you can possibly imagine. Cool, uh, so Ada, there. can you roll a wild magic surge for Muse, by the way? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you find something in this man's ribs. It is wild magic. It just pours out of him. It's the, the punish issue. <laughs> it's not a kid, so, I mean, this has got to be punished. Yeah. So as as he slashes, there's something, like, that kicks out of Ada. Because, like, she... She just did something so horrendous that was unprovoked that it was because Ada is not like inherently evil, but Avery will will override when there's something that like creates cognitive dissonance, like to to an overwhelming amount. And then Avery like yeah, Ada's eyes soften, and then she she kind of she kind of grits, and they, they get a little watery. She immediately goes up and like uh, tries to tries to bandage and pull out and like softly extract the spear tip that went in there and just I'm I'm so sorry. I I I I I lost control. Are, are you all right? 
and I'm like wrapping his ribs as I say. <laughs> I look uh, at the guy and I'm I'm just like, like the expression. The bitch on is crazy, face. man. So I've taken my mask off and I'm like, I will leave you in a room with this. <laughs> uh, so this wild magic surge is uh, what are the ones? Uh, reads two three nine four. The caster's spellbook is now written entirely in purple crayon. <laughs> uh, now, Ada, given that you are purplish, bluish skinned, um, I'm going to say you stab this man. Uh, you sort of crack into his ribs. You don't really notice right away because Ada is in that control moment. And then when Avery comes back and says, oh, I'm sorry, are you okay? He's sort of coughing up a little bit of blood. Uh, and his blood is purple. Interesting. Is my blood purple? Uh, I don't know. Your call. It can be if you like. Oh, sure. Why not? I'll I'll be um I'll be wrapping him up. If I need a medicine check, let me know. And uh, just kind of doing the best of my ability, getting like some salve out and like putting in the wound and cool. Cool. Not not prob probably directly after Vaz does the like the whole shin shock <laughs> yeah so he gets sort of blasted uh, on the shins he's been stabbed in the rib uh he's sort of coughing up blood at this point you can see the sweat is starting to bead down his forehead uh he's keeping his jaw clenched extremely tight um and he seems to be you know got his eyes mostly closed trying to put himself somewhere else so still not very responsive uh but he's concentrating very hard on whatever it is that he's thinking about uh which is well, as far as you're concerned, just not being in this room uh, or in this cave. Cool. Um, I'm going to turn to Ada and just say, get all that crap off him. I no. A bit. No, he needs help. He's injured. Can't do exactly. this. So there's no way we are going to be able to treat his wounds that someone just inflicted on him. If uh, he's wearing all this clothing, it's going to get in the way. So strip it. What are you gonna do with all that clothes? Kind of... <laughs> <laughs> I just oh, kind of tear it, tear it where the wounds are, and and like, give him like a good old capri shorts. <laughs> so he's, he's gonna have like a belly shirt and these capri shorts. Because gonna... old... <laughs> nothing says torture like capri yeah, shorts. Yeah, gonna... <laughs> it's a real torture. To his, to his new clothing, and I'm just gonna be like, this can this can keep going if you if you want. Like, how much more can you stand of this makeup? <laughs> How many photos do you want us to take of you? It's Capri's, yeah. And then I, I look over to Brogdon, like, don't make me put this on Facebook. Not the snap back. No. <laughs> oh, God. And, like, I, I continue to mend him, and I, I like, the Ada's, Ada's look softens, and she takes, a like, a cut at her hand, and she's like, your blood. And she references her own, which is, which is purple, and she's like, I, I can help you. I, I don't. I don't want to see this through. Again, he's still very focused on, you know, keeping his teeth clenched. He's, you know, in quite a lot of pain uh, already uh, as we start this off. But uh, you are going to hear him sort of mutter through his jaw. <laughs> what, what they'll do is worse. Okay. Uh, um, Ada. Uh, I'm going to need you to give me a little bit of room here. Uh, this, this is going to be unpleasant. Um, and I'm going to take off one of the many belts that's like hold on uh, a part of my gear. Uh, and I'm going to start to wrap it around uh, his calf, uh, just just below the knee. And I'm literally going to, they've got like ratchets on, like almost like the things you use to secure um, stuff to like the roof of your car, those kind of straps, like uh, bit of the builders use. And he's just going to crank it up uh, until there is no circulation reaching this man's leg. Uh, and then he's going to turn around and say, all right, this is a fun one. This is, uh, this is one that actually happened to a friend of mine. He got crushed by a bit of industrial machinery, got his arm trapped. Now, he thought the pain of having the circulation cut off was bad, and we genuinely thought that was the worst of it. But if you slowly allow blood to flow back in every now and again, it stops the muscles from dying straight away. Uh, and it's the most pain you can probably experience directed straight to your muscle without me really doing anything. This is going to be your body fucking having a go at you. Now, 
I'm gonna I'm gonna keep this nice and tight, and eventually I'm just gonna stop releasing the pressure every once in a while, and you're gonna experience uh, tissue death, which is particularly unpleasant. So, if you ever want to be able to walk again, this is uh, this is your priority: is to get me to stop doing this to you. In the meantime, I'm I'm gonna honestly watch what happens here because I'm interested to see where the fuck this conversation is going he points to Ada and it's just like cool so I'm going to tighten up her leg and then I'm just going to see what the thanks for Len for following uh, go he's going to he's going to sort of lean in as you're saying this and he's going to look obviously you know you can't tell if he's got like a desperate look on his face like he's about to tell you something he's fighting back a lot of pain that he's not used to this man is not accustomed hmm. to think to this uh, kind of thing on a regular basis hmm. uh, and he'll sort of mutter into your ear this isn't my first body that's okay you're not leaving this body anytime soon uh, he will smile when you say that what a fucking right. okay. it's creepy be like fucking that. thing to say <laughs> yeah. this is not my first body like what <laughs> bro I mean, a tennis brief for following as well. I kind okay. of like, I, 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 I go, I go past Faz, and I'm just like, you, you could see, you could see Avery wincing, and just she, she sees that like he, like he made his point with this particular object, and and then I, I immediately go, go, go to patching it, and I look over Brock and I'm like, we, we understand, to an extent, you see, we, we are not of this dimension we are also a part of an alliance of those who understand we're working towards a greater cause i know you feel as if you'll be found i know as if you feel you cannot run but i can assure you we can do our best <laughs> thanks josh free moms <laughs> raise some drinks <laughs> They will come for me, regardless. Well, in the meantime, uh, how uncomfortable do you want this to get? Because if I don't have a lot of time, I'm going to start getting really creative. You know there's actually two bones uh, in some parts of your leg, uh, and if you get a crowbar and just twist the edge of that, the bones start to separate, and they will flex to a degree. Uh, I've never seen that happen. So I'm curious, to be honest. Uh, so I'm going to start working your legs over. Uh, in the meantime, if you feel like giving me some information to stop me from doing this awful thing to you, then, you know, uh, that might that might help uh, me alleviate some of the pain. <laughs> you imbeciles <laughs> haven't specified what information you want so okay. what are we talking about here we... <laughs> <laughs> wait wasn't okay. wasn't josh the good cop <laughs> tell, <laughs> tell me things huh <laughs> fuck. <laughs> fuck your things <laughs> I think he got bored yeah. of it like within like a half a second. Yeah. Like, oh, Ada's it, spearing him. I want to try. Yeah, well, no. It's just like if we're not doing the subtle approach and we don't necessarily have have time, then yeah, uh, you have to like. Vaz has done this before, simply because, um, uh, yeah, he um, like he's had to interrogate some pretty fucking beastly people before. So yeah. Um, Did he have okay. a list of questions last time, or did he just kind of? <laughs> Uh, yeah, no, but honestly, Wait. I can't. I can't remember. I can't. <laughs> no, there wasn't. There wasn't a goal in the torture. He was just paid to torture. Yeah, no, but Got I genuinely it. can't remember from last episode why uh, we torture. Him save time. the kid. Uh, the whole idea. The whole falling it? kid. The blue smoke. Save the your truth. tesseract, which you don't yeah. have with you, because can he? Can he know, teleport? How's he portals, teleport? Two portals over Seda. Cool. Okay. We want his mind things. Mind okay, things. Right. Thank All you. the mind things. Thank you, party backup. Yeah. Thank Sorry, you. cross talk. Over. Oh, um, it's all good. I know, uh, I know, Trainzy, you you were there for more of like the portal stuff. I'm pretty sure Ada was like actually physically around and has spoken to Domino a bit more 
So do you want to ask the questions? Because you probably know more than Baz does, technically. Um, as as considering I, you can actually getting um, <laughs> you can actually you know be good cop bad cop on your own because you're split personality and psychotic. <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll I'll walk up. You know I'll mention. Um, what do you know of the child? Are are they are they harvesting him? Which child? There, there's multiple. There's multiple children. <clears throat> Say, to, as over a hundred thousand residents. I'm gonna slowly just twist the uh, the blade into his leg and just say. There was a tavern that we went to uh, a little while back outside the city. Uh, Mitch reminded me of the name of it. It was... Out of the Urzat uh, outpost, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so uh, it was just outside the Urzat outpost. And um, you guys you guys sent some uh, pretty gnarly dudes to uh, to come and Thanks, take a kid. Which went really fucking well for you guys, Uh no, you, no, those guys are all dead, right? So, um, yeah. Want to tell me about that, for starters? Tell me about the blue smoke that's been cropping up everywhere. The, the incident at the wall. The, the child who disappeared. Yeah, that one. found a new host it's the new child so he swapped bodies he swapped form okay we don't know what it is but yes the power moves between hosts what kind of power is this I have many theories. But the most promising suggests it's a mobility of sorts, a, a tether to other worlds. Uncontrolled. Well, I believe you were at the crater at the wall. So this boy has the potential to, uh, jump forward your well your little corridor of transdimensional relocating whatever that is whatever your term for that is this boy needs no such corridor what danger does he offer the crater produced at the wall well, relatively small, given the scope of what he might be able to do. As far as your planet, I believe, could all be sucked in <clears throat> the next time he falls. Tell us what you know about Radix. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking idiot, but not stupid enough to get out of the city quietly nowhere near as mad as he made them think who's after you <laughs> his agents who's he the consul his his black shirts. So they are the, the staff among or beyond the blue, the higher, the ones that operate for the console. Three. <clears throat> three shadows. Three masks. 
the sneak in, try and teleport out. I can't do it when people are looking those guys. <clears throat> Any speculations as to their abilities are currently still only speculation. No, but we've actually seen them. That's my point. <clears throat> Good for you. Look, How... What 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 can I do? And I like take, I like grip his eyes with mine, and they get very <laughs> steely as as like. Well, I mean, not like, just just <laughs> like, I like my eye eyeballs come out of my head. What? You've got purple blood. You can do this too, right? Last season in Numenera, everyone's eyes popped out. So that is uh, true. Oh yeah, that was a thing. I had snail eyes. Um. I'll, um. If we had access to get you out of here to another dimension, would you take it? Not all worlds are as welcoming as this one. I need more detail. Uh, and Ada, give me a perception check, getting this close to his face and forcing him to look at you. Uh, Intelligence-based, visual-based DC uh, is a four. We're going to stew for following a gentleman and a scholar. Oh, cool. I'm trained in perception, so that gives me one edge. Uh, the uh, training would just bring it down from a four to a three. Oh, okay. And you can go from there. I'll, uh, I'll spend... Wait, no, I have... Um, any intelligence check, I can actually use speed... To, I can spend points for my might, speed, or intellect pool when uh, applying effort to intellect intellect tasks. So I'm gonna, cool. I'm gonna use some some speed, which I do have an engine to reduce it down by two, okay. and a one. Sweet. So a roll higher than a three. Got it. Good stuff. All right. Uh, as he's sort of muttering that, you know, you're holding at his jaw, maybe, and he's like trying to look away or not make eye contact. Um, He's he's picking at something with his tongue, but he's trying to be discreet about it. Something in his mouth, something in, uh, in the back of his back of his uh, jaw. I immediately grab his mouth open and and try and try and inspect what it is because I I mean, uh, you know, Jan earlier is, he gave us those pills. Yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> I was just like, <laughs> Don't uh, fall. cool. Yeah, you'll see. Uh, there's sort of a half dislodged. Uh, like fake tooth or like a capped crown uh, that he's like wiggling at the back. I'll just pull it out without cool. regards to how it... he dies. <laughs> <laughs> Cyanide goes up. No. no, I mean not squeeze it, but like like brace the pull cap it around it. Like yeah, cool. Uh, so you pull this out. He kind of oh, oh. again. He's being sort of leaned back, which hurts his abdomen a lot because there's still a spear in his ribs. Um, oh, I removed uh, the spear. Okay, yeah, there's no, a, uh, sorry, yeah. there's a spear-shaped oh, hole. Massive. Yeah, yeah. 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 happens. Uh, so he's like, he sort of keels backwards. Oh. <clears throat> and now he's uh, visibly more agitated uh, as you pull this out. Uh, you pull out this crown, and on the inside, uh, you can see that there is a small circular metal disc uh, with strange little engravings uh, on the one side of it. Does this look similar to the the discs, that, the plates? In any way? Uh, I will say, Ada, because you had the doomsayer's eye that he carved out in front of you that had one that had some little plate behind it uh this is very similar to one of those different size slightly different shape but it's this strange weird metal uh and uh similar sort of engravings uh, around the edge of it huh. Faz, Faz will sigh and just say i'm i'm sorry were you going somewhere Faz, leave him alone he, he's given us all the information i I want to protect him. He wouldn't give us it if it wasn't serving some greater cause than himself. He is a doomed man, and he knows it, and I'd like to reverse that. Restore faith. Brogdon, I take you for somebody who cares, regardless of how much they've beaten it out of you. 
care to not see how worlds ripped apart at their seams. If that is your threshold for empathy, I'll take it. I mean, you have met some of our colleagues. It's kind of it, yeah. Don't want the world to end. Actually, no, some of them don't even make that. <clears throat> the consuls. Schemes. <clears throat> are shallow and short-sighted. <clears throat> they serve none of us. Um, I understand. What, what can you tell me about your cap? And I, I apologize for roughness. I, I'm, I've been a bit weary with, with pills that shorten one's lifespan. <clears throat> it's a door of sorts activated in water. <clears throat> this one leads to a very nearby dimension, one I've used before. A mirror world to ours. <clears throat> Just darker. Um, do we need to travel there to find answers? <clears throat> the only real answers are at the university. Okay, so baby steps. First things first, we need to know more about the university and how far you've come along. Uh, <laughs> if I'd, if I'd been there myself, I. I mean, how I close wouldn't be here. To figuring out, even its location, what kind of mechanisms protect it. <laughs> matters little, given that the Consul won't allow anyone near his gateway. Don't worry about that. He's flesh and blood. We can that... deal with him. It's just getting through the tech side of things. You don't seem to understand. You're hindered by the fact that you have the mind, but not the muscle. And I can tell you right now, we have a lot of guns, a lot of explosives, a lot of lunatics, and more combat savvy than you'd probably like to admit. We've made a complete fucking mockery of most of the console's uh, blue shirts. We've dealt with some of his tougher forces here. He's not as tough as you may think he is, especially when you have an army standing. <clears throat> you, um, major point. <clears throat> Three thresholds from the consul's portal <clears throat> to the university. Three different thresholds, different every time, different to everyone who passes through them, different keys, every iteration of them. <clears throat> How I, I feel as if we are running low on time. I, I know they are coming for you. I know that this, that whatever this vessel is going to come to an end. And I would like to know how I could preserve you. Is there a way I can have you travel to something that is safer? Or can I capture your essence somehow and travel with it discreetly? If you allow me to go to that darker world, our bodies are different there, separate selves, you understand it. I could wait there. As long as I can keep the key and simply open the portal and have you go through, I will, I will take and keep guard of the gateway. It'll ensure your safety. 
Yes. It, that, that key, the door from you took, doesn't expire. Uh, both of you roll a sense motive check, DC of four. Also, uh, thank you to Smothery Expo, pledges on Patreon. Thank you, my friend, a gentleman and a scholar. That's Patreon fist bump. <laughs> thank you, my friend. Appreciate that. I'm, I'm trying to keep uh, notes on this guy. It's not making any sense. I, uh, I'll, I'll reduce my, it down to three. Cool. I have... I have... Yeah, no, I'll go as well. Cool. I like how we've managed to separate the one person who understands transdimensional travel <laughs> from who's this, yeah. interrogating the scientist that studies transdimensional travel. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, Ada, no. you just have a 10. <laughs> uh, so you just beat this DC of 3. He's not telling you the whole truth. You're not quite sure if he's lying or not. I don't... I, I feel like... Um, you're like... It will somehow run some calculations of the the consequence of his deception versus him actually telling like fragments of the truth and you know the the soul of that child being weaponized which affirms her previous beliefs that you know the child has the possibility of closing certain gateways forever <laughs> so i think i think like in a moment she stares to the ceiling and runs these like probabilities just from the chip and, and and kind of nods and regardless of 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 his his true intention she'll she'll facilitate the gateway we've been in the tall school for seven months it was three hours now so, now seven months <laughs> fuck me uh cool so yeah you uh sort of activate this portal he'll instruct you uh uh essentially just sort of placing it on your thumb and putting just a small amount of pressure uh with your index finger uh this opens what looks kind of just like this uh, strange discoloration. It almost looks like that that illusion screen cipher that the party had. Um, there's kind of like one of those wormholes in uh, in the most recent Bioshock, uh, those tears where everything on the other side is sort of black and white, but it's still the same cave that you're in. So this other world he's talking about is uh, literally the sort of the near opposite of this world, but uh, in sort of muted colored tones. And... Uh, He'll sort of look to the two of you and say, uh, <clears throat> if you really want to <clears throat> if you can't get through the palace here, the consul does not know about this side. And his palace exists here as well. And he will try to like stand up even though he's got his hands tied and he'll like hold his hands behind his back towards Vaz to no, make... tied, tied in front of him I'm not or... letting him ha his hands out of my sight uh, but oh. yeah no I'll, I will give him the belt um, and just say because I have made a slight incision in his leg um, and I will recommend you know I'll just say uh, keep the belt keep the pressure on wrap it tight and uh uh, you know what, fuck it. And I will, like, just grab him and I'm just gonna say, this can really fucking hurt, but it might save your life, because he's bleeding quite a bit. And I'm just going to, uh, I'm gonna cauterize his leg with my glaive. Oh, <laughs> wow. Awesome. Nice. And Swayway today's five pounds, just because I love you guys so much, I want to give a random, uh, person a party potion punch bowl. Thank you, my friend. <laughs> uh, I guess we could cool. roll a, a, a dice for that, I guess. Uh, well, what we can do is, uh, we'll, well, have you can decide, roll, uh yeah, we'll have one of these two roll a cipher in a second here. So Josh, you cauterize, uh, his wound. Uh, he sort of <clears throat> bites through it as best he can. Uh, and then he steps into the portal. Uh, he immediately becomes very muted colors. Like you can see, you can see slight bits of pigment, but, uh, this other place is mostly black and white. Um, the portal's still sort of wavering. Uh, Ada, you've still got it sort of pinched between your fingers and it's sort of coming out of uh, that space. Uh, once he can see that he's clearly through this threshold, uh, he's gonna grab at something in his pack, uh, hold onto it carefully, grab a small uh, little Numenaren device, almost looks like a, a little metal tin whistle, but you can see sort of lights and engravings and inscriptions on it. He's gonna whisper something into that. 
uh, sort of put it with this other device and extend them through the portal, giving them back to you. Uh, yeah, so we'll say Josh, roll uh, a d100 for a random cipher. This is where he just hands me a bomb. Yeah, something. another fucking nuke, Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> Bullshit. You, you guys need one of these? I've got like 10. <laughs> Actually, can I get something else? I got two of these back over. <laughs> can I uh, can I spend an XP and um, have I the... No, I mean have the portal device um, something that is the size of like something that could be intravenous like to run through blood. Uh, Sure, yeah. Yeah, definitely. And then can I can I uh, use um, like to just as he's inspecting the Aaron device, stick it in Baz's blood, like his, his veins, and have it for Cool, yeah, how does what, Baz feel about that? What did you just do? Like inject him with it? Yeah, so he's he's looking at the cipher, and I said that I'll, I'll, I'll protect him and we'll do what we can. And then as he's turned around, he's gonna find one of his main arteries and just kind of like make a, a incision and in, in, in submit it through. And it's just like his, it's gonna, it's gonna grab him, and then I'll have something quickly to like tourniquet it. But um, you know, if I if I need to roll to see how swiftly I can do it for him to not like push away my hand. Yeah. But he's he's pretty. Go ahead pretty... and do that. Cool. So uh, yeah, this device that he puts down uh, looks as if it's it looks like it at least part of its casing came from or, or was borrowed uh, or borrowed pieces uh, from the constable's batons, those sort of staffs that they have. Uh, you see some of the same buttons, the same dials and sort of knobs, uh, but this is uh, a little bit bigger. It's been expanded. There's other sort of components to it. Um, and someone will have to identify to actually track what this thing does, but he places one of those down on the ground. Um, and you notice that it stays black and white it does not become more colored like this device is somehow connected to the shadow space uh that he went into um but otherwise yeah ada when you inject or when you try to like transfer the possession of this portal over to uh over to vaz uh the portal sort of swallows up uh and swallows closed but you presume that you'll be able to open it we'll say one more time so this was he was lying. This was a one-time cipher. This was not a, this portal will keep working. Um, but because you spent an XP, we'll say you can have one more use of it that will open wherever you are into that sort of shadow space. Um, so keep that in mind. Uh, and Ada will say you like realize that when the portal closes, shit, he duped me at least in some capacity. Um, this has only got one more charge uh, and Josh is in control of it. Yeah, so it's it's in his veins and I imagine it just gets like taken by the stream and it's kind of hard. Okay. Trace, unless he had like um, a metal. <laughs> uh, I mean, he's got a load of armor on and stuff like that, but I mean, he took it, most of it off, so yeah. he wouldn't get, you know. He's been whipping a guy around the shins with a fucking piece of cable, you know? It's exhausting after a while. Um, so, uh, I'm going to punch you in the face. I th- I th- okay. <laughs> it's, no, no, no. This, you, you, you've just injected me with something. I don't know how long I have remaining conscious i know you're a psychopath i know you've hurt people in the past i know you've done terrible things to people and uh, technically I'm, you don't have your injectable nuclear bomb on your person so that may be a bit of a trigger for you that you're now anxious about it yeah I, like it, no his first his first thing his f- the first thing that goes through his mind is, is i've just been like mega roofied which is like numenaren for like just normal roofies because you know you've got to deal with like mutants and shit you got to really up the mega yeah thing. yeah yeah I think Ada will take the punch and she'll like wipe the blood up and then she'll look at like as with like a semi-sinister look. She says, you have a weapon, but now you hold the key. You're responsible and you are bound. (laughs) Vaz has you by the scruff of the neck and like is contemplating whether or not to beat you till you don't resemble a person or anymore. But it says... I want to say that in fucking common. Say that in words that, you know, really connect with me before this fist repeatedly connects with the inside of your face. So, you are now responsible and you can't do with that weapon as you like. That may be the only key to get into the console and it will be have to be extracted. You are a liability because you control a weapon of mass destruction. This is insurance. 
You realize you've just given me the capacity to nuke an entire mirror dimension. The child has the nuke. You have the gateway to get to Frogden and the gateway to get to the console. As we leave Vaz contemplating whatever the fuck that might mean, <laughs> we will okay. say that, uh, Jan, you're sort of speaking with one or two of these Traporo shepherds who led you to this cave, uh, you know, just doing what Jan does, mingling, you know, making himself sympathetic to the, the populace, asking, you know, what have you been yeah. dealing with? You know, what are the Romans going to do for us? Right. Uh, kind of <laughs> bullshit. And, uh, yeah, Tempest, uh, Tempest can be there as well, but we'll say that Tempest, you see Domino coming first. So Domino sort of trotting along the road. Uh, what Making color his is his, what color are his eyes? Uh, how long has it been since the combat ensued? Uh, probably like the better part of an hour or two. Uh, well, before he's, you, he's back before to you, normal. He has, yeah. he has blue eyes. So he, uh, well, <laughs> Domino can't see him. Yep. Um, so Domino's so, interact with you at all. I, I guess Domino could probably we just, see We just Dora. watch him go uh, by. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nope. <laughs> that actually hey, hey, remember that time you chopped me in the arm? Yeah. <laughs> and actually, uh, time? actually, as as the party sort of reconvening, and we have this scene with uh, uh, Jan, Tempest, and Domino, uh, we're going to open up the VD, the viewer decision. We haven't done a big open one in a while. What do you want to interrupt the party on their way back to Seda? And I'll just leave it at that. All right. Well, interrupts on the way back, guys, underneath that line, throw out your ideas as to what could happen next. And remember, in just five followers' time, we'll have another viewer decision, and we'll be here 20 retweets, another one as well. Get those ideas in. So, have I noticed this uh, Domino's trundling along at this point? Yeah, yeah, we can say this between okay. the three of you. Domino's walking up, and you and Tempest and these shepherds are there. Okay. As uh, Domino approaches, uh, Tempest says, Are you feeling yourself again? Uh, Domino looks around, and he sees, I assume he sees Goro, and he says, uh, I, 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 I'm not sure what you're referring to. Very well, then. Yeah, I'm sorry. You, it was as you anticipated. Your other programming took over. I had to take steps to ensure the mission was accomplished. Well, I, 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 I hope everyone made it out okay. No thanks to you. I assume your efforts with the... What do you say? Transdimensional beast was successful if otherwise you wouldn't be here I, I would assume so very well right now uh, we have Brogdon and uh, Vaz and Ada are interrogating him for information oh, you hear him get stabbed uh, what, what, sounds what, about right what, what information are they getting from him a lot of screams right now by the sounds of things. What his insides look like, uh, that kind of thing. Also, you know, the questions that we need answering. You will understand if I can't allow you to go in there. Would would would, would you like a like a list of questions prepared? <laughs> I think mean, it's too don't. late. So, <laughs> <laughs> no, that would have been, uh, been nice, but no. They like to free form. <laughs> <laughs> can't oh. be interrupted once they're working. Well, well, I hope they got everything that they need, need, need. We will see. Did they ask about the second door on Seda? Oh, I'm sure they would not forget to ask about something as obvious as that. <laughs> For splash cut. <laughs> yeah. Splash cut to him stepping into the portal like, The second door! Shit! <laughs> portal closes. <laughs> <laughs> the second door! <laughs> Perfect. So, um, well, well, I, I apologize for my absence. Uh, uh, it was blissful. So, <laughs> uh, Jan, you're going to start to feel, remember when that one of those vine polyps that was sort of growing from another dimension out of that pond, when they were getting shattered by this crack in left and right, uh, yes. like a sharp whiff <laughs> of this kind of bark material stabbed into your shoulder? Uh, that wound is starting to feel... 
like rank like it almost feels infected it's kind of really tender all around it obviously you already got rid of the chunk yeah, and you, yeah. um, but you also notice that it's starting to feel really cold um hey and can... of course Good. domino your leg fleshy chunk is starting to feel first of all that's weird it's feeling uh so that's new but also it's feeling like uh it's like really cold and cramping I guess is the way to describe it, but those are all novel, novel sensations. For yeah, I, I say, hey, do uh, I got the tingly t tentacles again? Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, your tentacles are okay. These are specific to their two wounds. Walking Very good. Can, can someone take a look at this? I kind of like take off my shirt to show like Tempest and Domino. It's feeling really bad. The chunks out of it, but it still feels like it's uh, like necrosis or you know weird skin. So what does it look like? Yeah, can Tempest it? inspect it and see? Looks nice. Uh, yeah, it, it's, uh, it looks like a nasty infected wound. Uh, he's been stabbed by a mulker blade. Uh, whatever. Um, <laughs> no, Frodo! <laughs> the, uh, we'll say, you know, because everyone knows the reference, there's like discolored veins sort of like coming out from around the wound, uh, and they are bluish and like kind of like simmering every once in a while. I like need some giving... kings for it. <laughs> yeah. That's a weed. That's a weed. Atlas, <laughs> of course, that's a weed. <laughs> yeah, so it's got a blue coloration. Uh, definitely looks infected. I mean, does it look like the same sort of weird veiny stuff that you were talking about on the kid? I mean, slightly different because this is a wound, whereas for the kid, it was sort of his, like it was coming out of his mouth in a way and his hair was coming out. Um, you'd have to look at it another way look closer uh do something else to assess it's definitely not a normal wound and after like an hour it should not look infected like this so this is some weird numenaran or ultra dimensional shit uh well i'm i like a uh, I'm in Numenera, but not like in not like in uh medicine or anything can i do a closer inspection to see yeah yeah sure sure uh how how obviously numenaran would it be uh, I mean, just the fact that it's like rotting and necrotic, uh, which it shouldn't be after an hour, uh, okay. no matter what that shit was made of. Um, okay. yeah. So yeah, I've, I'll, I've got I'll, like I'll, his I'll, skilled in Numenera to throw at it. Yeah, so you can, if you've got skilled in Numenera, skilled in uh, medicine, uh, skilled in first aid, anything like that uh, might help. Uh, we'll say the DC to like really identify what's going on here is a five. Because um, what, as far as what you're looking at, this is like a puncture wound. And to pick out what's actually going on with this rot uh, is going to be a bit of a leap. Um, well, can can uh, can Tempest do this a different way and see gotcha. this because it's patched fairly fairly isolated? Um, I look to Yawn and go, "This looks really bad. I don't think you want this." on you yeah uh domino the best any ideas? way to inspect it is to get it out of you you might want to bite down on something oh wait, wait, hold up domino you're no numenera shit is there <laughs> anything else i should know before i go taking out my body parts yeah it's not a body part i mean i'm thinking it's just take it's like taking a big uh you know like when you get a thing removed at uh yeah. it's like you know, taking a bite at the dermatologist you gotta, you gotta <laughs> suck the venom out yeah <laughs> yeah, well, out. yeah. That's not my plan, but yes. A little bit of flaying here. A little bit of flaying A little, little, little. So, so uh, as the ominous voice of the invisible uh, Tempest is talking about cutting pieces of you out, uh, you do feel a sharp pain as if you should have bitten down <laughs> as uh, Domino just stabs oh. his finger into your hole. <laughs> oh. Ooh, this, this, Ooh. this is clearly infected. Phrasing. Wrong hole. Wrong hole. Oh. <laughs> Oops. Wrong hole. <laughs> Bitch, what do I know on an 18? Cool. <laughs> um, you know yeah, so wrong hole. <laughs> you stab your finger into that. Uh, and uh, I kind of want some kind of a comical, uh, like you get jolted backwards. Like it's not going to maybe knock you on your feet, or sorry, knock you off your feet, uh, but it'll probably like you'll immediately retract your finger because, again, your power source <laughs> is something extra dimensional because you don't actually have a battery anymore. Uh, so even like the idea, like your heartbeat is sort of connected to this dimensional stuff. Uh, and when you stick your finger in there, that's like, you know, a mini cardiac arrest. Like there's some strange hiccup there. Um, Stop whenever... licking the wall outlets. Yeah, exactly. Right? Basically. Uh, <laughs> Stop the walls. Jan, 
Jan has been infected, uh, and this was uh, the Wild Magic Surge, actually, which is dope, uh, from last week. Jan's been infected with some kind of trans-dimensional sort of uh, virus. Um, his body is essentially becoming sort of trans-dimensional energy. Uh, what the actual Wild Magic Surge read was uh, this creature starts to become increasingly magical and if someone casts dispel magic on them they will die immediately uh so how i'm framing this Jan now <laughs> Jan now has the same infection that the boy has um he's got this sort of bluish discoloration he's slowly going to start to, to deteriorate in the same way uh and suffering certain forms of transdimensional travel or like some kind of dimensional anchor would kill him so yeah, so Domino like jabs him in the hole, and like oh. I, I imagine like all of the all of the like 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 in like synapses fire, and you can see like lightning go through all of the veins that are exposed, like that blue smoke, and then he like jerks his hand out and he says, "Well, well, well, I have good news and and bad news." Bad news. It, it, and he processes for a second, knowing that he's obsessed with his own death and how to reword what the bad news might be. Bad news is you might live for as 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 long as you want. That is bad good news. news. Is, good news is you 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 might die like the boy. I like there's like a second way yeah, and like <laughs> he looks sad and then he like grins. He's like ah, how many like I, I'm like <laughs> how many veins are connected? How to many that? people can I kill? No no like are there twenty three veins? Count them. Do I need more holes? I need, more, more I need 22 more holes! <laughs> Play the freaky frog for following a gentleman and a scholar. Yeah, I think Jan's... He kind of like... He grins at first and he kind of shrugs and he's like... This is... This must be intended. Uh, Donald looks to you and says, I, 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 I think the boy was born that way and, and you are infected. Good. I'm not sure what the consequences will be. We'll have to wait and see, my friend. But this is obviously connected to everything which is going on here. If it does have to do with my doom, then this is a good sign. That emancipation and freedom is not far beyond for you. Y yes. <laughs> now, let's see how they're doing of that interrogation, shall we? Yes, yeah, so... I have a few questions myself. <laughs> So uh, yeah, you'll you'll enter in right as Ada's sort of getting Vaz to stop, you know, waving a fist. Uh, but Brogdon's not there anymore. Explain. Where 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 is the scientist? <laughs> I look to Ada. Well, well explain what exactly well, just happened. <laughs> you see, <laughs> he's he's safe. In short terms, I don't want him to be safe, Ada. I wanted him tortured. He was. We oh. got all the information <laughs> we needed. Did you? Did you? Did you find out how to get into his lab? Yes. Or his lab? No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I thought you meant chest cavity. Yes. Sorry. <laughs> uh, I will let either Josh or uh, Trainzy spend an XP. And have the answer to one more question, but you can't both do it, and you can't consult on which question you think one another has or doesn't have. But yeah. I'm out. Thanks, B. Can you know the way to his lab? Yeah. Oh wait, no, not the lab. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. Uh, I have, I have XP. Yes, I will. I will take that piece of. I will take that XP. I'm, I'm out. Okay. Oh, uh, the lab. You want to know how to get into the lab? Yeah. Cool. So we'll say that uh, he describes. You talk. Fuck you. <laughs> he'll describe to you uh, that essentially this like mirror shadow dimension uh, to the current plane, the, the ninth world. Everything is the same, but it's populated by like the shadows of people uh, rather than their actual selves. And so he says that you can travel through the shadow plane to get into the palace you'll be able to get into his lab all of his yeah. notes will be in the lab um but there will be other shadow entities 
that you'll need to deal with when you're there. They will be the problem, not like the console's guards who will just like, the shadow will represent where the guard is in the real world, if that makes sense. Okay, fair enough. Um, cool, yeah. So Raz will, Raz will point out that, you know, he's, uh, said he had a, he had a doorway of some sort through a, another dimension. There's no actual entrance way on this plane of existence. Is this fucking making any sense? Like, Vaz straight up, like, doesn't really comprehend what he's saying. It's just like, it was, you know, there's, we gotta go in through a, a, a different dimension. And then he points to Ada and said, Ada, let him go into said dimension. And he left this. Well, Vaz holds the key if we want to pursue him. Oh, and then she stabbed me in an artery. <laughs> Looks up to the side of the wall. Yeah, I point to the fact like Ada now has a black eye. Um, also, uh, Gareth wants to give his Patreon D10K to uh, to Trenzi. Perfect. Um, I think Yan is like very confused. Not sure if he should be angry. Like, um, so sure we let him go? No, we know where he is. Where is that? He's somewhere inside an entire other dimension. Oh, okay. So easy to track down. So he is. He is in the. He's in the dark side. The dark dimension. He's gone over to the dark side. <laughs> this is. We. If we, we had cookies. Want, we know this. <laughs> if we want to approach the console, we have to go there ourselves. Ragnan will be there. He is a man on the run. He has nowhere to go. Well, who's he on the run from? The console. Why? He has secrets. He has knowledge. He right. told us far too much. What he reckons is that the console has plans of his own, and those plans aren't saving everybody. Those plans are probably, well, glorification and all that shit. He doesn't actually plan on saving everyone with the library or figuring out what is going to happen when this kid does whatever this kid is going to do. Oh, I've got the same infection as him now. I like show him in my back. Excited. Yeah. <laughs> you guys. It's my new tattoo. Check it out. Uh, I, yeah, I'm going to point uh, my glaive at you. <laughs> Just say, like, keep you on the other side of the room. What I, the fuck? Yeah, and uh, shrugs. What, what, what the fuck happened? I don't know, but seems connected to the boy somehow and doom, etc. Um, so, so we let him go. How does this benefit us? I look at Ada. He has more knowledge. He knows how to operate within the dark side. He's gone off with that knowledge, though. Surely. <laughs> he has more knowledge. We, we don't. He's he's gone, but he has more knowledge. We don't know how to navigate there. He uh, is of no more use. The console. We uh, can only gain more from protecting him. Right. I can't I say I understand. Yeah. What about this injecting vas or something? Yeah. So, apparently, I'm the only one who can now access that dimension. Because he stabbed me. She said, because she stabbed me. Isn't that actually a good thing? No, is it you have, the That you one. are the one I'm who the protects one. the gate now, as the strongest of us. Okay, right, I, I get that. But at the same time, I mean... He has a doomsday device on him. You, no, no Doomsday I don't have Device okay, is back in the cave. Oh, yeah, yeah. We, He's we, got we, a Doomsday we, Device back at home. <laughs> I was, well, if what... Oh, gosh, did I hear... What did I hear? What did I... We know that the boy is possibly a Doomsday Device, right? Yeah, well, well that's... Is that general that's knowledge now? Repeatedly said that... Yeah, you know, pretty so, much everything in a game is a Doomsday <laughs> Device. Yeah, everything's a Doomsday <laughs> Device. Um, you know... Give the program. There's... 
choose your pick. We now have Vass as a doomsday device. The the injector is a doomsday device. The boy is a doomsday device. I take offense to that term. Okay. The boy, the, not the injected. No, I'm talking about your actual thing. Okay. The syringe is yeah. a doomsday device. No, you are now the door. I'm not. I'm now a door. Wow. Racist. Who? Oh, have fallen. Of all of us, who would? Who is <laughs> the best god right of the door? Think for a moment. You are the best god for this door to make sure no one else goes there. You now stand sentinel over the entrance. You didn't want Ada to have it. You don't want Domino to have it. I don't know what the fuck to do with it. I don't. Yeah. We don't want yeah, Vaz to have it. Yeah, yeah, Beyond yeah. to have it. You're Vaz. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we don't want that guy Vaz to have it. Oh fuck! Wait. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever we do. Uh, <clears throat> Domino, you are going to notice this strange, jimmied, homemade Numenaren device, seemingly yeah. composed of at least some parts uh, of the the constable I'm, I'm, staffs and batons. I'm um, just casually holding it. Like, I have no idea yeah. what it is. Right. So... I'm going to casually... Oh, wait, that's the thing that, that, they gave, that he gave you? Yeah. Oh, wait, uh, yeah, there's that, there's that, and there's... Now I was going to say, the room is full of stuff too, right? Yeah. There's the main device that he gave you and some kind of little whistle. Yeah. He's also, like... Did he try... Because we took all his gear off him. So what's... What did he leave? I, I forgot to mention, like, did he put his clothes on? Before he uh, yeah, we'll say presumably he sort of at least tried to remedy the Capri situation uh, before, yeah. <laughs> you know, going yeah, at very least. You know, who wouldn't make sure uh, that was taken care of? Uh, we'll yeah. say he would have taken his, like, basic effects and, like, he would have thrown his pack back over his shoulder. Um, but he but didn't have any on, weapons on him. Uh, we still have the book. Yeah, you still got the yeah, book. Yeah, I still have the book. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So I'll just sort of turn around and say, like, well, we've got some of his gear and we have uh, this, which he straight up handed to us. Anyone? Oh, God. Okay, right. Fucking lens. Whatever you... I tried to make up a nickname. Uh, I am just struggling to understand how much closer we are to... Uh... Our goals. Um, I don't think we are. Right. That was my fear. We, We're closer than <laughs> you think. We have a way. We know where we need the, to go. Shadow right. dimension. The key thing is, from what I understand, we can use this shadow dimension as the back door to get pretty much anywhere. But it closed pretty sharpish. So I don't know how much we can use it. But if we, when we do, we can, you know... Wherever we go in, we go into the shadow plane in the same place, just on the mirror equivalent. And when we come out, we'll come out in the mirror equivalent of where we ended up. So if we fought our way into, you know, if we end up in a bakery and come out, we'll be in a bakery in this world, or we can use it to get around. But that also stands for stuff like the palace, for this guy's land. So this is how Brogdon's been getting around, or maybe these shadowy... Black shadows, perhaps. I think it's something like that, yeah. Hmm. Okay, so now we have the weapon that we needed, in a sense. So that is good. As the uh, as the group is sort of discussing or recapping, uh, one of these, uh, the Traporo shepherds, uh, is going to sort of pop his head in, and they you know, they dress sort of. Uh, I'm thinking. <clears throat> of like tibetan i guess so there's like a monastic flavor mm -hmm. to it but also like very uh sort of hunter gatherer type so lots of furs pelts he's like big hoods uh with sort of fur trim um oh my god please no. <laughs> and uh so yeah one of these one of these shepherds will sort of pop their head in uh and just sort of gesture uh to you Jan. i go over to him i nod i kind of motion for folks to give me a second i go and speak with him privately i guess Yes. Uh, yeah, so he'll just uh, sort of whisper to you and say, uh, and you know from speaking with these shepherds that, you know, they never say that they, like, actually saw something themselves. They say that, like, they saw, you know, the wind told them X or, you know, sure. while so was moving by. So it's all in their sort of uh, cultural sort of scripts. Uh, but they do indicate uh, that uh, the city 
The city is under attack. Seda? Seda is under attack. Do you know who is attacking? Uh, and again, in this sort of cryptic, he's going to say the the beast is devouring itself, or the you know the bear is eating its own insides. I I nod, uh, and I put a hand on his uh, um, shoulder, and like I hand him like some rations or something like that. I don't know because money wouldn't be worth anything. Let's go. So I hand him some some stuff. Thank you, my friend, and I turn to the group and I kind of walk, I rush back into the room and I say, Seda is under attack. There is no time to waste. To repeat that for tall school. Seda is under attack. There is no time to waste. Ooh, sorry about that. Okay. No, no, no. I had to put a roast in the oven. It's all good. <laughs> Guests coming right after well, the stream. We're going to have to leave that roast for later, Tempest. It's delicious totally as it smells. Seda is under attack. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so yeah, I yeah, this campaign needed a beer. So, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, uh, I, he says, uh, yeah, he says the beast is devouring itself, as if that means something. And I say, now uh, we need mean, an actual beast is attacking Seda, or Seda's just burst into civil war. Chaos. The yes. latter is probably what you would assume from Yan. Yeah. Okay. Um, so yeah, I, I I nod and I say we need to use this shadow realm. And we need to use this oh. fast. Rebellion is happening, my friends. The spark has been lit. Where, 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 where did he say the other door was? The shadow realm. <laughs> I thought we established <laughs> is that this bullshitting? <laughs> Are you, are you short-circuiting? <laughs> um, you, you, you can't reuse the same door twice. I mean, I, I thought he was saying, <laughs> I can't. This bitch. door. <laughs> this door, as in, like, this lake. Or did I miss that wrong in my notes? Oh, in my notes, I put down this, uh, that the console doesn't know about this door. I thought it would mean, like, this lake. Or was he saying, this door, this shadow realm? I don't I mean, understand just, like, what's happening, but somebody get me to say there as soon as possible. Okay, yeah. I think we should leave the say there right now whilst that is discussed. Um, but yeah, I think what he said is. Um, Essentially, this shadow realm is not known of. Like, he doesn't know how to access it. He doesn't know about the mirror world. The massive hole in his security. However, there's going to be a load of demon shit there that will try and kill us. Yeah. So to give the sort of the the ten thousand feet up sort of GM summary, just to to help sort of parse, uh, I do commend everyone trying to sort of stay info filtered in character, but just for uh, clarity's sake. Uh, so yeah, Brogdon sort of indicated that. Uh, his research, he, you know, Brogdon's interested in far more than what the console is having him research. Uh, Brogdon wants to find this university. If he does, that's all he would ever need. That's all anyone would need. Mm -hmm. The console's plans that he alluded to are, are so unimportant. He didn't necessarily think that they were evil or malicious. They're just petty compared to finding the university, mm -hmm. which is Brogdon's goal. Uh, the console doesn't know about this shadow realm uh, that Brogdon seems to use to move around the ninth world. Uh, the console has the only access to the gateway or the hallway that would lead to the university uh, through a series of three doors. Um, and he doesn't let anyone near to it until they have definitive answers. So Brogdon's been trying to find a way via the Shadow Realm to get into uh, the console's fancy closet, essentially. Um, yeah. Keep all his cross dressing stuff. Yeah. And the flaying kits. Uh, so yeah, uh, Jan just essentially says, you know, let's go. There is no time to waste. How do we go? You're the gateway. Vaz, open the door. I look to, I, I look to, um, to Yan and, and just say, you realize if we go now, we're leaving Seda to burn. I want to be in Seda. We all want to be in Seda. Hey! Hey! hey. 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 That was a soft pitch. I couldn't help it. Uh, An XP. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, take an XP. <laughs> horrible ah. cue on that one. But uh, so, Mike, you said you were investigating the new Minera. So, Vaz, uh, will say, would you have allowed uh, yeah, yeah. Domino to look at these two things? Yep. Uh, cool. So, Domino, roll me a new Minera identification check. One is a DC three. Uh, the other is a DC five. All right. So, DC DC three first. Oh, baby. And DC5. Crushing it today, guys. Cool. Just, all right. Uh, Very so the DC3 
uh, the small whistle. Uh, that whistle is going to summon uh, some kind of a steed. Uh, it's a steed from that shadow realm, uh, and you're pretty sure that it's going to be invisible in this realm uh, because you're kind of riding it upside down, if that makes sense. Like, you're riding its shadow, whereas it's actually one of these creatures on the other side that'll be running. Um, but whenever you blow the whistle, you don't see it. Um, the bigger device uh, is actually two devices, or it sort of it, uh, it twists and, and comes apart in half. Uh, and this is a pair of shackles that will lock. Uh, one time you cipher will just seal and lock that individual in the dimension that they are in permanently. Um, and these things, you get the sense that they sort of like turn off once they're locked and they sort of just become these sort of benign items that can't be removed you know you could mm. cut off your limbs maybe but uh, it sort of binds your soul i guess uh, would be the way to put it sick just mechanically speaking um has it been an hour 10 minutes one action for us to use some d6 for recharging uh i'm gonna give you guys two hours at this point i'm gonna so, I, I so we can do some rolls yep yeah I, I thought score was just gonna say just mechanically speaking that wouldn't work but you know <laughs> You're just gonna completely like. Eh, That'd be it's honest. Bullshit. <laughs> Sounds pretty safe. Cool. So yeah, Jan says uh, we gotta go now. Go. I need to get there quickly. Uh, Vaz says uh, that okay, there may be like, in the way. I have a dome stuff. to meet. It won't wait. <laughs> <laughs> my, yeah. my, point, my, my point, guys, is if we use this now, there's a chance that we can't then use it to get into the uh, the palace. So as you say that, Domino reaches for the whistle thing and then takes it and then looks at it, and then puts it to someone else's mouth, realizing that he doesn't have a mouth still, <laughs> uh, and hands it to someone else and says, blow, this, blow, this, blow. This, this will get us to say that quickly. I whistle. <laughs> Whatever the horse whistle sounds like. Wait, so cool. shrill yeah, pee yeah. whistles. Yeah, so yeah, <laughs> you, you blow into this whistle, uh, and you start to hear, you know, from outside of the cave, uh, the sort of clopping of uh, these hooves. Um, and uh, you see what is like a 12 foot high at the shoulder steed uh you're you're pretty sure it's some kind of a horse but it does have kind of like ram's horns i guess but it it like it's got more of the sh horse's proportions uh it definitely doesn't have uh like ram wow. or goat like proportions four legged uh, tauntaun does have these yeah i guess right. yeah four legged tauntaun is a good way to describe it's a, uh, it's a regular again, camel okay. you yeah. see this Jan, you see this as That's like right, a though. silhouette -y kind of shadows pouring off of this creature, but you can definitely see it. Um, no one else hears or sees anything. Okay. Yeah. Our right is here. Right. What? So, so while while Jan is distracted by this this uh, shadow camel, uh, Domino is going <laughs> to look over to Vaz and he's going to take the two devices and separate them and show him. And uh, like while while uh, like not quietly, but while no one's paying attention, he'll say. This, 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 this is for the doctor. It will bind him to the shadow realm, realm. And then he combines them back together and gives it to him. So shadow realm. Shackles. <laughs> Shackles. Jan gets on yes. the shadow camel. I like how Baz camel. has been there for the entire like <laughs> explanation and he's still like, Knows the least. Whoa, Shadow Realm? <laughs> Bro! Oh. <laughs> Why did we let this guy interrogate him? <laughs> I just torture people. What's the question? <laughs> what was my yeah. guys? That was <laughs> a question. Yeah, dude, like, totally. <laughs> cool. All right, so Jan is getting on uh, the mysterious camel. Jan, we got definitely... some brewskis after this interrogation. Bro. Yeah. <laughs> there would for sure be room for probably one, maybe two more people to ride it. Uh, you all see Jan get on an invisible 12 foot high steed and he's now floating up in the air. Um, I can take one I, extra on Gora. We've determined that, right? Yeah, Tempest, you got Gora, so. <laughs> but I can take one more, right, on Gora? Yep, yeah, that's right. So I got two. Okay. Yeah, so mounting up, anything else anyone wants to do in this cave? Get on my uh, shadow that, cable. That, that puts us one shot. <laughs> <laughs> Do we have Did another somebody mouth? have like a snake, like a weird camel snake thing, or whatever it was? Well, you said three uh, potentially on a. Yeah, there could like they can fit two more on uh, whatever. You, you can have enough between Gora having one yeah. extra. Whoever's oh, left can fit on this. Yeah, yeah then, then we all mount up. Foot high, yeah. you know, twenty foot long steed. Yeah, then I assume we all mount up. Cool. Oh, yeah, yeah. 
<laughs> All right, so uh, riding back uh, into Seda, uh, you'll arrive just at dusk. And normally you would sort of track, you know, which entrance, which entrance uh, rather has the sort of densest group of people coming into the city because that's the one that you'd want to try and blend into. Uh, presumably, Jan, you'd get off this steed uh, so you're not floating up in the air. Yeah. yeah. Um, because you'd want to sort of blend in, and then once you were within the gates, then you'd quick right. find the nearest entrance to the sewers uh, and that. Um, but the gates are closed and there are zero people around uh and it's still like just dusk like now is when there's supposed to be a lot of traffic because everyone's yeah, yeah. getting ready for the night or leaving uh it is like a ghost town you don't even see guards up in the parapets and you don't hear any real commotion coming from inside of the city okay uh can gora fly up and see any see over the walls and maybe take a look get some kind of a scouting Sure, yeah, yeah. Luke. So you I fly mean, up a little bit, at least to look at just the nearest neighborhood. Uh, yeah, just to kind of get an idea of what might be going on since we heard that it would basically erupt it into chaos. Uh, yeah, you uh, you don't see anyone out and about. Uh, the streets are empty. Uh, all the windows are shuttered up. Uh, you do see maybe one or two windows shuttering sort of actively. Uh, so at least the residents seem to still be within the city, but everyone seems to know not to be out on the streets tonight. This is strange. Yeah, he said that. it was under attack, but there's nothing happening. Maybe it's the shadow walkers, the three who have been assassinating others, perhaps. Well, what if... What if they're all dead? What if this is a purge, a, a culling, anyone well, who doesn't have their doors marked? Yeah, I know it. Let's go find those who are knocking on the doors. I want to kill go some fucking one. carol singers. <laughs> <laughs> Vaz wholeheartedly agrees. Um, yeah, so Vaz, Vaz is completely lost, so he'll just go along like... Yeah, I'll say, uh, I'll say, Jan, you know, you used to live here. We're a professional, uh, you know, instigator uh, in this city. You know some doorway somewhere among the walls or, sure. you know, some crack, whatever, to at least just get in, given that it's all sort of sealed up right now. Uh, so, yeah, you guys can be uh, in the streets uh, of the city. So it, Deserted. Uh, perhaps we should yeah. perhaps we should go find, uh, see if any of our friends are still below ground. Maybe one of the safe house's uh, entrances. I nod. Head off to the nearest. I guess we're running through the streets at this point. Sure. Yeah. Uh, Stealthily, yeah. yeah, yeah. So there's not uh, not really any any sort of constable or or city official presence uh, in the streets. Uh, as you run through, you'll run to let's say there's just a tavern. Uh, there's there's uh, the Winchester uh, that you know was one of your sort of access points down into the sewers. Um, it seems to be empty. Uh, you know that there'd always at least be someone behind the bar. Uh, and when you go behind the bar, you're going to see that bartender. We'll say, uh, actually, Dalo. Do you guys remember that young boy who Josh asked about his mom, but his mom was dead, and Josh knew that? Yeah. yeah. Really so Dalo, you know, Dalo had taken up out. work, you know, doing his doing his part to help this uh, rebellion had, you know, worked as one of the staff in this tavern. Uh, he's neatly tucked behind the bar with his throat slit uh, in a sitting position. Shit. It's begun. Let's go. And whatever entrance, like trapdoor or underneath the rug or whatever, straight down the sewers. Cool. So uh, you guys head down into uh, into the sewers, uh, into the cave networks, uh, and immediately you can start to hear sort of echoing through the sort of surface level sewers, you know, where those catacombs would have been domino uh, and where the actual sort of river would flow through. Uh, so still quite a ways above the secret caves below that, ha that house that lake. Um, and you can start to hear sort of many, many boots uh, sort of clicking around and in uh, hushed voices accompanying them. Uh, there's a lot of people inspecting and looking around in these sewers uh, in hushed voices. All right. We also hit 20 retweets, Domino, which Domino means looks... viewer decision whenever you want to bring that image. So uh, we... Domino looks at Jan and he says, uh, it, 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 it would behoove me to tell you that I, 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 I am not fit for combat. And then he shifts his plates and you can see like splayed wires and those like disjointed insides. Uh, he looks pretty fucked up. Do we see like the green stuff and the, the growing arms? And... 
Like when uh, you he only has so he has the the spots of like weird uh, pink pink uh, man meat on his arms. Uh, <laughs> man meat. Wow. <laughs> Those are visible you most of the time. He just shifts plates over them. The other one's on his leg. The spongy growth is on his leg. Secretly, he's an orc guy. But, uh, but did we notice okay. that it like it grew a little? Uh, has it grown a little? Then yes. Well, I guess you wouldn't notice that it grew a little because you didn't see it to begin with. But uh, you do see a weird spongy growth on my leg. And when when we Im jumped immediately into the sewers, why didn't we have to roll a Ninja Turtles check? Uh, because Good I just point. assumed you already all had pizza, so you're probably good. Oh, we all, okay. that's there you go, yeah. We all did. Assets. We have pizza um, initiative going on. Yeah. Auto um, with the that's the real rebellion that we're... <laughs> fucking pineapples on pizza. <laughs> yeah, fuck that <laughs> shit. Um, yeah, Yans. So, so do I get the impression that these, these boots are not our troops that I'm hearing? No, I think we're, they're about to actually. Yeah, so... So you guys are you guys are in like the public sewers. Yeah, you yeah. know where all of the secret entrances are down into your little cave network, and you hear you know what is uh, you know, I would say uh, you know at least a couple hundred uh, constables, no, city fine. officials rummaging around looking for these secret entrances through the sewer. You know you see her shouts like, "Oh, you check over there!" You know this sector's already clear. Yeah, go there. There's all this sort of inspection, uh, but you guys know where to go. They don't seem to have found the secret cave network or the lake yet. But something fairly sizable is mobilized. Uh, yeah. We should um, get to the Oracle and down to the lake. Yeah, yeah, I nod and say, quick, 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 and Domino, like, everyone's going first, so I grab up the sewer grate, Domino's going in first because he's a fucking pile of loose wires right now. Pretty much. Cool. Uh, Alright, so the party are rushing into their secret network underneath the sewers. Uh, you know, you maybe run into one or two of, you know, you've got guards placed at each one. These rebels are just kind of like, hey, how's it going? Why, why, what's, whoa, whoa. Because you guys are like big Me wide eyes. Yeah, exactly. Bruce, yeah. Hey, man, you see the game? Uh, yeah, there's just like a couple dudes at each one of these tunnels. Um, yeah, most everyone else is sort of getting ready to sleep, winding down. Uh, yeah, I think it's, I think it's the kind of, let's go! You know, like whatever, like, red Crazy arm alert. that we have, yeah, like, like punch the button on the wall, which, like, rah, 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 everything starts going off, you know, the, the blast doors begin to open, and, uh, and do then... Do all doors lead to the sewers, though? Are we just gonna basically... No time for metaphors. <laughs> yeah, no, so what we're saying is... No, but I, you know, <laughs> but do we have, we know the sewers are occupied. We need to make sure they don't go just up through where right, we right. came down, or else it's going to be slaughter in the sewers. Oh yeah, yeah. No, we're, we we're not like sure go up that way, guys. Yeah, we, well, yeah, we need to make sure they're taking the all the way to the outside of the the gate door yeah, we, or pet tunnel or escape route. Yeah, we can presume that you had some sort of defensive plan. If you know, what, you've got a secret code word that means shit's getting real, and like this is how we defend this place or whatever. So. Yeah, you can sort of mobilize, uh, mobilize that. Uh, you know, there's a there's a sort of chain of command and an order. You know, this person wakes up that cave, and then the one person from there wakes up the next cave, and everyone starts uh, getting like, other I shit. I think at some point, Nyan like looks at Vaz and is like, "Get all of the the giant bombs." Yeah, yeah, no, Vaz. <laughs> Every last one. <laughs> yeah, Vaz. Vaz, Vaz goes to like. Like, I like the fact, like, you go past, like, the food rations and stuff, and there's, like, a really small pile, and then there's, like, medical supplies, and then, like, you get to, like, the WMD rations. <laughs> 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 All of our oh, space is just using bombs. So, uh, actually, Tempest is going to check on Oracle and bo and the boy. Cool. Uh, so, uh, you head out to the lake, I guess you can, like, dock off. Yeah, because I can <laughs> uh, dock off. <laughs> like, like, uh, so, yeah, you head over to the center of the lake, uh, where the oracle is, you know, she's still sort of recovering. At this point, she's sort of sitting, rocking with her legs crossed, uh, muttering to herself. It is not uh, safe here. Drekken, the Grey Warden, is with her as well. Uh, and she's sort of just finished administering some form of, uh, uh, of this medicine, this tincture that she's been uh, feeding. Uh, and the Grey Warden looks terrified uh, and looks to you, Tempest, and just... <laughs> you have to protect her. She is the most important. I it understand. All comes, it all comes back to her. And then Drekken is gonna like look to you and look to her and look for like a nod. Oh, for, that for me, so of course, the, my question is, must she be protected here or can I relocate her? Or is this my last stand? They just can't get her. 
whatever then, that takes. Um, then I look to the Oracle and if Drekken thinks it's okay, I'm going to take the Oracle and Doc Ock off the island towards the escape route that we, that we, you know, the plan that gets us outside the wall. Sure. Uh, cool. So you're like positioning her somewhere safe that if there's a fight that breaks out, you know, you've got a position yeah, exactly. to her, but also, you know, getting ready for, uh, if we lose this fight, we might need to get out of here. Bro uh, squad around. Yeah. Yeah. They can be mobilizing, mobilized. They can be with you, uh, actually in the immediate, uh, um, Gora, I basically slapped on the haunches and said, stay safe, you know, cool. and so, she, you know, here, wait for my whistle in future episodes. <laughs> uh, so you go to uh, check on the boy as well. Uh, the boy is in a serious uh, fever, uh, sweating quite a bit. Uh, you can see he's like soaked through his, you know, his sheet, uh, his blanket uh, into his pillowcase. So he's sort of shivering, but sweating profusely. Uh, his coughing is continuing uh, with this blue smoke uh, that pours out of his mouth. Um, there doesn't seem to be anyone around him attending him as everyone's sort of mobilizing. You know, maybe there are one or two women who would check on him. They're now occupied with a couple of the things and they say they'll be back in a minute. Uh, he's been like this all night. Does he seem awake or cognizant or anything along those lines? Like, is any type of communication possible with him? Uh, not just by making noises. Uh, if you'd like to touch him, let me know. I would... Yeah, I will. So, I will because I I'm, was planning on moving him. So if, and if that helps with communication, because basically Tempest wants to say, apparently this isn't your first vessel. But try to hold on, if you can, and tries to lift him, to take him somewhere else, to, so he doesn't fall into the hands of the constables. Cool. Uh, you'll feel that to the touch. Uh, even though this boy seems to be sweating, uh, is freezing cold, uh, so cold that it sort of stings your arms uh, as if you just picked up, you know, a block of ice or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, and as you're sort of carrying him into, you know, maybe this side room, uh, this protected area uh, where you've gone and placed the oracle, um, the boy is going to sort of whisper and you think you hear it from the opposite ear from where his head is. Uh, the boy is just going to whisper, help us but that's all you really hear and he doesn't mutter it again and he sort of goes back into his shivering and okay uh vaz you went to get all your big guns and stuff right yeah um <laughs> he also kind of wants to uh find falco and just yeah i, I need i need some like of uh, best practices on hand Cool. Well, you can, like you can find Falco. He's one of the first who's sort of up and and coordinating. So you can find him like en route to your weapon store. Uh, what do you have to yeah. say to him? Uh, I just explained that we're gonna grab like some of the heavier weapons that we stole in the raid. And in the meantime, I'm not gonna tell him about the, uh, the ridiculous bomb that we have. But I will sort of state that you know we've got to clear out the weapons lockers and arm everyone. Uh, and we need to do it in a, a state that doesn't cause injury. So um, yeah. Cool. He, uh, you know, he kind of gives you that equal parts fear and excitement, like nod, uh, and sort of runs off to, to get everyone equipped and empty out the stores, uh, make sure that all the weapons and ciphers and devices are all checked and primed, and everyone who gets a cipher knows exactly what it does so that no one fucks this up. Um, when you head into, like, your private weapons storage, you know, your private cave off to the side, uh, Vaz, you see Bernard's body. Fuck. Sort of Gee. propped kind of in a chair. Uh, his head is sort of limp. Uh, you don't really notice discoloration because he's covered in shit in his plates. Uh, doesn't seem to be moving. There's a bit of a, like a coagulated pool of blood at his feet. Um, and the majority of the rest of this room that used to be your room is filled with a cocoon of some kind. Uh, there are these fibrous sort of tendrils with this sort of roughly oval shaped, uh, you know, probably 10 feet around uh, and at least 12, 13 feet uh, high, almost you know, filling the majority of this little antechamber, this side chamber, um, sort of purplish, bluish, 
uh, cocoon, and you see the weapon, uh, sorry, the ammo can that you had given to Balvary with your sky shard in it is empty on the floor. Fuck. Okay. Remember that thing you forgot about? <laughs> no, I've been waiting. I've been waiting for the jab and twist of the blade. Uh, so while we allow both Josh and Vaz to be standing there with their jaw on the floor, uh, Domino, Ada, and Jan, you're a prep. Uh, so Domino's first order of business is to find whatever mechanics we have that are available to make him not a shambling pile of bolts and wires. Cool. Uh, roll me a d10, uh, and that is, if you want, if like your sole focus of spending this time is recovery, yeah. uh, you can recover one d10 points to uh, to any of your pools, and that's from like multiple people getting help. That's just sort of this over the few minutes grabbing so-and-so, you know, this guy does wires, and this guy was one of the armorers, whatever. Uh, okay. So combined they all contribute to a singular recovery which gives you that d10 nine not bad um can i uh, do i know that madame bolvery is still around here uh you would have known that she was uh last when you guys left the city she was sort of losing it a little bit yeah, yeah. Over bernard as bernard was trying to recover yeah and then we haven't seen her yet so um nope. i think yan's gonna go and find her where he last saw her uh, yeah, after I mean, grabbing guess... his shit you know yeah, you can ask around, you know, where's the Bulvery, where's Bernard, you know, where'd yeah, you yeah. see them? Uh, and yeah, you'll be directed uh, and walk over to Josh's chamber where you're standing behind uh, a Vaz who's just sort of standing there um, in front of this cocoon with a dead Bernard and an empty ammo can. Now, Shit. important, um, you said about the ammo can, obviously. However, um, has the rest of the place been turned over? Uh, nope. Nope. Okay, cool. As right. far as you can tell, I mean, apart from the cocoon taking up a lot of the room uh, yeah. and you know, knocking but, shit down the edges. Okay, but Bernard, Bernard is very dead. And how did sorry? What, how did you say he died? He uh, so he was getting infected in some way by that uh, Numenaren clamp device on his leg that had those little eels, uh, okay. uh, and they were sort of draining from him. The doctors were worried that taking it off. He would bleed to death. Um, they were trying to find a way to get the eels out without whatever, and uh, just didn't get to him in time. Okay. Uh, Afraid of James also, or Jams. Also, Good. Not an expert in in bug boy physiology, so yeah, positive, no. that might take a while to figure out. Uh, he, not, he's not in his throat slit, is my point. Like the guy upstairs. No. That's, when you said he, he was dead, I was like, oh fuck, someone's already come in and done. You know. The rest of them are all just the cleanup crew. But okay. Uh, sorry, sorry, everyone. Did um, did I see Bulvery? Is she? No, she like everyone yeah. says last that uh, they saw Bulvery was carrying Bernard into Vaz's chamber. Okay. I I well, say that to Vaz like shit. Bulvery brought him here apparently. I look to the cocoon. And I look to Yan, and I'm like, oh, "This is gonna sound fucking crazy, but crazy is all we got at the moment." Uh, caterpillars, bugs. He points to the cocoon. Points to, uh, points to. Oh, I can never remember his name. But uh, Bernard, 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 is. Bernard, yeah, and uh. You don't think... You don't reckon she used the shard in some way to get him a new body or remake him, reincarnate him, whatever you want to call it. Uh, I mean, she was taking on his suffering. Maybe if he passed, then so did she. She was under a tremendous stress. Perhaps this is her, uh, like, uh, protective form, like a coma. Or maybe she's just dead. Okay, um... I think Bernard is dead. Uh, Either way. I'm gonna, uh... I'm gonna go ahead and 
try and... <laughs> right, first of all, I'm going to grab the weapon. I'm going to grab the weapon. Priorities. Get that. And then after that, I'm going to um, get the... Like, I'm going to head uh, out of the room, I guess. I don't yeah, know you can... Uh, I'm not going to make you, like, roll or spend XP to, like, have the important shit you wanted to preserve not be stuck in the cocoon. You can manage to, to get your stuff. Uh. Yeah. Um, and then I guess, like, are we gonna... Oh, if we're about... I guess we're abandoning this place, aren't we? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Like, we're never going back here. Okay, cool. Um, in which case, uh, I will I will just turn to you and say, like, get out. Just get, get out of the room right now. Uh, Yang goes. I'm a poke it with a glaive. Off to find my door. The wonderful doom of Yang. Yeah, I guess I'm gonna poke the uh, the cocoon with my blade. And uh, <clears throat> open this thing. Cool. Uh, how hard are you poking this thing? Gently at first, and then with more gusto. Uh, yeah. So it's quite hard. Uh, it's got some sort of like hardened uh, film. Uh, you can see that these fibers that are all sort of wrapped around each other, they've kind of like got a gloss look to them, like a glassy reflective uh, uh, sheer. Uh, and that seems to be where this density is coming from. You'd have to seriously chop if you wanted to get, wanted to get into it. Oh, God damn. Okay, I'm going to... Let's cut yeah. you open. <laughs> I'm going to see... A protective We've cocoon not... form? No! <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you! <laughs> Madame Bovary used hard and Fuck you! <laughs> <laughs> What's this bark skin? Fuck your bark skin! <laughs> I'm yeah. I'm gonna like. I'm gonna start just just dragging the blade down, trying to make like a use it like a scalpel, which it most certainly is not. Um, uh, cool. Yeah. So it's gonna take you a minute. So we'll uh, cut to Ada, but it, it'll take time if you want to carve this open. Uh, Ada, your prep for the coming siege of sorts. I think um, after seeing the points of flesh raised on Domino and it having worked on him prior, I'm gonna be following him to to whatever because I just repaired him, like to whatever repair that he's looking to do. Imagine he's. I can I could probably make the assumption that he's infected just a little bit. <laughs> Man, I want to thank Dr. Chunks for subscribing that Twitch Prime as well. Thank you, my friend, the gentleman and the skull. I salute you, sir. Raise some drinks in chat for Dr. Chunks. And that is another viewer decision. Oh, baby. Oh, baby. So we got, we got two in the works now? Yep. Jesus. Cool. All right. Well, let's uh, start this first one. Uh, first viewer decision, uh, what is the secret weapon... Uh, of these constables, the city officials who are about to attack the resistance's secret hideout. Uh, what is their secret weapon that the party? Are they going to appeal to Yan? I feel like we. I feel like we've already done two. No, am I? I feel like we did two. Oh shit! Berg Turtle had just subscribed to Twitch Prime as well. Thank you, my friend, the gentleman and scholar. Salute oh, you, sir, as well. Raise some more drinks and chat for Berg. Thank you, my friend. What was the last viewer decision? I what don't happened? know if we. Uh, so it is. It. it has happened. It just hasn't triggered. Gotcha. Yet. Gotcha. So, gotcha. Yeah, I'll put it out. I'll put it out for chat. Um, but there is a disturbance in the force, uh, as it were. Okay. Uh, Thank you, DJ. Anytime, anytime anyone in the party rolls a crit, something is going to happen because your fates are now so entwined with the fate of the interdimensional stitching uh, that, uh, yeah, all of your intradimensional selves are contributing to your current endeavors. Uh, so when you roll crits, shit will happen. Any direction on this view decision, Mitch? Uh, so this one is what is the yeah, secret weapon? Secret uh, weapon. Of, secret weapon of the the consoles. This sort of this battalion that is attacking the resistance's secret hideout. Uh, what is their secret weapon as they barge into, finally try and rid the city of mutants? Yeah, I think I ru Yan rushes out whilst Faz is doing his cocoon stuff. Um, uh, grabs any of the ticking time bombs that haven't been picked up and is. Uh, like rallying people, like to me, to me, etc., etc., etc. Yeah, yeah. So you're you're sort of like building, uh, like There's a, a group of people. Yeah. So yeah, to fight uh, <laughs> you know, men who in such a reckless hate. And then uh, fucking Nazgul comes up. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> that, 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 was uh, such, that was such a good speech, and then I got fucked by that Nazgul. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, That's so you're so sort great. of getting getting prepped. Uh, we'll say there's we'll say there's like two. 
uh, main tunnels that lead into the central lake chamber. Um, and these are the only two that are really wide enough to facilitate moving a lot of people back and forth. So those are the two that you're defending the most heavily. The rest of the small channels are filled with traps and ciphers and individuals whose job it is to set up that cipher and run. And then you got a chain of those. So there'll be two main fights at these two bottlenecks trying to get into the lake chamber, we'll say. But yeah, back to Ada right. for uh, Ada's prep. Knowing that Domino is infected with something. Yeah, I'm just stalking him. Cool. Yes. Yeah, so right behind like, his like, face. Like well, the thing is, like, I I really am about evaluating the weaknesses of the party. Cool. And I, I've seen that, like, the is where where the weaknesses of us armor remain. But this is like a new mystery that seems out of Ada's understanding and control. So she is really like trying to gain assurance and, and find out what's going on. Cool. All right. <laughs> Makes sense. So we'll cut to Josh, I suppose. So we've got Tempest uh, off to the side, protecting both the Oracle uh, and the sick boy. Uh, we've got Jan rallying at, you know, one of these two entrances, uh, the sort of main uh, group of, of resistance fighters and mutants that are going to try and repel the constable's men. Uh, and we've got uh, Vaz, hacking away at this cocoon, and Domino, once you're repaired, what, uh, what was your plan to participate in either of these two, either like uh, the, the west or the east assault? Uh, where is Tempest? I got the bro squad with me, I guess, sort of, we're, we're looking to evac uh, when it's possible, but also defend, you know, I, I guess we're in the room probably, and you know, I, we're, we're gonna be defending one of the things, but ready to evac, Tempest is ready to evac the, uh, boy and the oracle uh if necessary to you know, to to dock ock the hell out of there okay uh if things don't start turning the wrong way so i'm gonna look for that group of people um sure and hopefully find them i assume yeah no worries. um because he can see the bro squad he just can't see tempest but he assumes that they're together um and uh, when he finds this room with the boy and the, the oracle, he looks around, not seeing Tempest, and says, is, 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 has anyone seen Tempest? I am here. I, I hold up a sheet of, I put a post-it note on my forehead. <laughs> Tempest, I, I, I have an idea. Yes? What if we activate the device that is inside of Vaz and, 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 and store them, and he points to the boy and the oracle, in the Shadow Realm? Will they be safe there? For the MP people flowing. were talking about mirror copies. Doesn't that mean that the same people attacking, doesn't that mean there'll be a mirror on the other side that it's just as dangerous there as here? I, I, I believe they are just shadows. There are unique enemies in this shadow realm, but the consul, who I believe is, is, is looking for her and points to the Oracle, does not know about this shadow realm realm. I thought you were the smart one, Domino, to correct me and say that you can only use it once, which I assured you can use it twice. Why are we <laughs> going to store people Go in on. something that we can't access? Why there, waste the use? There, there, there must be a second door. Well, find it. As I said, you cannot go through the same door twice. There must, must, must be a door inside the Shadow Realm. We can use this door twice, but well, I, one more I, time, right? I mean, out of character, one more time. Yeah, well, twice in total. Yeah. Uh, so when you <laughs> say he says, he says, no, 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 you misunderstand what I said. You cannot use the same door twice. You cannot go in that door and 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 out that door. You must go in a door and then out 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 a second door. So you're suggesting we go in the Bernard with the boy. And the oh. Oracle, yes. Yeah, boy's not Bernard. Oh, yeah, no, no, no. Bernard's yeah, no worries. in the room. Yeah. <laughs> Bernard's okay. booked. So we, yeah. He's not we, escort, we escort them in. Yes. Let's, maybe let's leave it as the last option. If we need to, if we need to bug out, I'm sorry. I had to do it. If we need to bug out. It's like an XP. Um, <laughs> yeah. You didn't have to. You didn't have to, Jay. You made a choice. <laughs> yeah, I did make a choice. I made a choice. And to I'm be happy. like Mike. Uh, <laughs> Maybe as a last resort, and I say that not just 
not just we put them there, that we all go if we need to retreat. Who knows? They must be confident if they're coming down here to do a head-on assault. We don't know what we're up against. Let's have it be all of us escape to the Shadow Realm, and then we can protect them there since we don't know what they'll be, they'd be facing. Neither one is in condition to protect themselves. Yes, yes, that's what I'm suggesting. We all well, leave now. Well, as a GM that doesn't like to allow too much of an abundance of planning time, yeah. uh, <laughs> you are going to hear what? explosions. Uh, explosions are going to blast on the sort of far west and far eastern tunnels leading into this central chamber. Uh, Jan is, of course, sort of heading one of these groups of mutant fighters, uh, and we'll say uh, that Falco is is leading off onto the other. Uh, and so this fight is going to start. This fight is going to start in full. Uh, you're going to have sort of mutants clashing with these uh, with these these constables they've got their batons they also seem to have new numenera devices you haven't seen before uh these sort of chest strapped uh metal x's uh that blast same of uh the same sort of energy that was coming into their staves um so uh yeah this uh chaos is going to ensue Jan is in the thick of the fight um i guess we've got tempest domino and ada together uh and we'll cut to vaz briefly uh as you're carving open uh, this cocoon. Vaz, at one point you start to carve deep enough and you're sort of pulling away the layers of this uh, and you do hear a kind of liquidy shifting like a as something like rolls on the inside of this cocoon. Um, does that deter your cutting and carving or no? In my head I like, all I'm thinking to myself is like, am I crying? Is this just an onion? Like, am I just carving my way through the world? God, like, yeah. Take an XP. Uh, <laughs> it's, you are entirely fine. Um, yeah, no, I'm gonna, no, I'm getting into this thing. Whatever this is, I don't know what the fuck it's doing. Whatever it is, I'm into it. <laughs> I'm liking it. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Uh, so you, once you break through that sort of outer, that glazed uh, sort of glass-like casing on the outside of all these fibers, uh, you start to get into more sort of sticky, gooey type shit. Uh, still mostly fibrous, uh, so kind of solid-ish, uh, more so than liquid. Um, you start carving, whatever is in there is shifting. Uh, you can hear what sounds like uh, a heartbeat. Um, and then you finally sort of get to some kind of layer that's kind of translucent, and you can sort of see something like rolling around inside. Uh, and you can take an XP as you like try and carefully slice open this this uh, sack of some kind that's on the inside of this cocoon uh and about a 15 foot ish figure is going to sort of like roll and plop onto the ground uh and it's going to be curled onto its side uh and i guess the best way to describe this definitely feminine its core torso looks more humanoid than not it has a long tail uh and its head has become a little bit conical uh and it has these sort of tendril like braids so sort of a cross between sarah kerrigan post infection and the alien from the alien movies if that helps okay sunny elves okay. over sounds gross Fuck. Uh, fuck boys. You still um, into it? <laughs> um, it's that point of no return where it's like, well, might as well. <laughs> I'm already into it. Well, I'm already here. <laughs> we came this far. Uh, Alright, so chat's going to have to give me some kind of uh, goddamn reference. What is this potato you're referencing? Uh, <laughs> is it Tackett's the potato? Is it Tackett's yeah. the potato they're referencing? Yeah. Oh, potato. Somebody, somebody give, me the, give me the Coles notes. It's a potato that looks like Trainsy. Just basically trying to. It's basically trying to. Uh, any <laughs> game he plays. Uh, okay, okay. Uh, so what? The, <laughs> this, what? I mean, <laughs> Rich, Rich went with that way too easily. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, the reason I'm okay going with it is because uh, I hear a prompt from chat and I say, "Yeah, I'll do something with that," and it's never going to be exactly because uh, the shit you give me is ridiculous and it would be too weird and I don't know how I'd make that work in the timeline. So. What is going to happen? While these fights are breaking out, Jan, you are going to see, so you're fighting. And actually, Jan, uh, give me uh, a sort of travel mechanic 
type thing, but for combat. So describe, like, just give me a quick narrative, like description of Jan at the front lines, dishing out some hurt and taking some hurt, etc. cetera. Uh, and then you're gonna roll a D10 and you're gonna lose that much uh, to either your might or speed pool, you recall. Uh, you can split it up however you like if you want as well, uh, as you're sort of helping hold off this uh, this offensive. Uh, yeah, Jan's right at the front and he's, He's like somehow found like a like an old sword basically, or like taken the sword from uh, one of the guards, and he's at the front kind of like cutting people down, but taking as many hits as he can as well. There's probably some kind of like de facto standard, like it's not actually a, a uh, like a flag or anything, but I don't know some cobbled together like sign of the rebellion that we have, whatever our like symbol is, and that's like being held up around. Uh, Yan as he's as he's it fighting. It just says Yan. It just says Yan. <laughs> vote Yan. <laughs> we also have the Yan van, which is <laughs> yeah pretty big. But uh, I take ten to my speed because if I took ten to my might, I'd be uh, exhausted. So, put my speed. Cool. Uh, well, you can split up. Like you can take two. And oh, okay, two okay. Or two or whatever. Yes, um, yeah. Yeah, roll a d10 and see how Six. much because it might not be too bad uh, as we start. Oh yeah, okay. I thought it was just ten. Okay. Yeah. Well, <laughs> well, pretty much. <laughs> oh, fuck. Well, Sweet. So Jan is like taking hits and and getting uh, you know sort of these energy blasts uh, left and right every once in a while. A melee weapon, a blade of some kind, or uh, some kind of mace will crack into him. Um, you notice in this fighting end, not only is this you know, like a full battalion of these constables, uh, there's some of the Borstal boys, the the sort of local gang mixed in amongst oh, them. Um, and if you sort of look over your shoulder to see how the other entrance is doing. Chat, I thought of a great way to combine a potato with Trainsy with something else. Um, Trains, you play a bit of Mech Warrior, don't you? Yeah. Uh, a, bit of <laughs> a little bit, yeah. yeah. Like you've played it before. Uh, yeah, right? you heard of it. <laughs> familiar with it. He doesn't have his own uh, server. You get this reference, huh? So on the other side, the other entrance that Jan is not at, but Falco is with all the heavy weapons, uh, we are going to see uh, this sort of humanoid mech uh sort of like crash in and it's what breaks into uh this uh this secret cave the hideout of the resistance um and instead of having some kind of pilot you just see this like strange heads up display on the whole front screen um that uh seems to be like crazed and malfunctioning it's some strange numenaren device that was activated clearly not created by the console uh and it does flash repeatedly and kind of like twitching and hiccuping uh asking for tickets uh some uh, some image of a cartoon potato asking no for tickets. ticket as this mech just starts bashing through and fighting with falco and his cadre of uh heavy weapons dead guys uh i want to go to tempest and domino and ada quickly as this uh fight is in full swing uh and is uh well so so far hard to tell where it's gonna where it's gonna land but uh it's definitely definitely violent this is a <laughs> last stand if this was your hideout so uh i mean initiative or just defense uh, or are we just describing stuff or what yeah there's uh, what would i mean tempest is doing full on or... yeah i mean tempest is as long as it seems as there's hope tempest is going to try to beat some of these back because the longer we hold people here the more people who are going to be able to survive later so you know, full tentacle attack, multi-attack as he can, drain, you know, quick drain on any Numenera that he sees. Uh, you know, he's he's going to try to protect things as, you know, if stall stuff until it's time to, if, if, if there's a hint that we're gonna get overrun, it's the grab the boy, grab her, tell Domino or, uh, oh, we're, we don't have the thing. We gotta find Vaz. Yeah, yep. so we'll say, yeah, you, similar narrative description of, of Tempest unfurling with all of his mutant glory uh, to fight back these these constables. Mm -hmm. uh, roll me a d10 for the damage you'll take, uh, and you can split that up however you like, distributed between might and speed pools. Uh, Pretty crafty for following, a gentleman five. scholar. Cool, so split up that five damage. Yeah, Tempest like. is shifty. And uh, Domino and Ada jumping into the fight, or what's what's the what's the play? Should I metagame and just try and decimate this, this thing? <laughs> or should I be actually Ada and calculated and 
I think, yeah, by the way, just as a point, I think Yan is beginning to fall back from the front line as he takes that fucking... Yeah, we'll say, you know, both of, these, both of these entrances are starting to get, like, pushed towards the lake, so eventually it's going to turn into one fight uh, mm. with, uh, you know, these mutants, you know, between, between uh, a pincer, yeah. Is the room with Yan off the lake room, or is it like we've got to break through to get to the lake, get to no, we'll say we'll say everyone in the party is sort of within this central chamber, and Vaz and this creature... Just come out of the cocoon, are also off of the main central uh, chamber, and same as same as your little hovel that you've uh, stuck. Okay. Yeah. Hey, now do something! I'm gonna oh. bum rush. I'm gonna bum rush the mech. Just okay. absolutely like sprinting towards it until I close the gap, and then Straight I'll, for I'll hold action until I'm at it. And then the bomb. Cool. It's called the uh, swiggity swooty maneuver. <laughs> 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 uh, yeah. So give me. Uh, I'm cool doing this combat because it's a big mass combat. Uh, it's just going to be a matter of each round, everyone's going to roll a d10 if they're running into this fight. Uh, potential damage that they'll have to distribute might and speed, uh, and then you can describe some kind of action. We'll say this mech is going to take at least two actions uh, for you to deal with, um, but I'll let you roll a d20 just to see if it lands a crit to deal with it in one. Just one d20. Yeah, just a raw d20 to see if it hits uh, a crit or not. 18, 19, or 20, or I guess 17 in Numenera. 17 to 20. Yeah, I, I got seven. Cool. Uh, so yeah, you run in and start uh, engaging with this uh, engaging with this mech. It'll take two rounds to take down. So how do you start trying to debilitate or damage it? To... Um, I, I, I look towards the cockpit and I hear the, 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 the phrase, the, the, the war cry. Hey! And I immediately just, just, just go it. and it just triggers completely, you. completely rage <gasps> mode. And uh, I use my crafting, <laughs> crafting technology and metalwork to uh, to try and analyze and, and pull apart some of the more essential components. Cool, yeah. So you're just like hacking at the seams and pulling out important wires and that kind of shit. So this thing yeah. starts to twitch and spider crawling up it, like just trying to navigate. Maybe, Fucking maybe starts. <laughs> Pulling a panel off of the like, like punching, punching this like tube that has liquid in it, just like pulling it off and just. Cool. So Ada goes ham on this. My mic. mistakes. Uh, Domino. It's just uh, so you said that they're, they're going to converge into one fight. Yeah. So currently, you know, this giant lake chamber, these two main tunnels that come into it, both of these defensive lines are starting to get pushed in a little bit, uh, as you're definitely outnumbered if you tally this all up. Uh, so he's so Donald's gonna try to uh, because he's still injured, so he has to think more tactically than, than usual. Uh, so he's gonna sort of wait until they are pushed closer together, so it becomes one sort of mass battle. Sure. Uh, and as soon as it becomes a mass battle, uh, a panel in his chest opens up and like Iron Man, and then just gas protrudes from him. Uh, and I'm activating my battle vapor. A faint red vapor fills the area within the distance. You didn't, I don't think you know which one of those. And all cool. energy weapons inflict plus two damage. Sweet. Uh, cool. So we'll say that as as these fights are sort of coming together, these rebels, these mutants are sort of ending up back to back to help defend one another. Uh, you are definitely, you know, slaughtering a, a number of, of the consul's men, uh, but their number just seems to keep, uh, keep growing. Uh, we're going to turn to Vaz quickly uh, and say that Vaz can potentially jump into this... Uh, as your vapor will activate, so uh, that sort of delayed a moment. Uh, so Vaz, this creature rolls out onto the ground, does some stretches, it seems to bend and twist each of its joints to understand how they're jointed um, before it starts to roll onto its front and uh, starts standing up. Initial Vaz response. Vaz is ready to kill this thing. I didn't know what the fuck this is. This is, yeah. So Vaz uh, will just sort of raise um, his glaive, heat it, and just say, what in the fuck are you? So this uh, sort of Kerrigan 2.0 is going to stand at its full height, uh, do one of these sort of long neck cracks and stretches, uh, these sort of tendril uh, look dreadlocks uh sort of flowing left and right uh it 100 looks like bulvary's features uh looks kind of like bulvary's face uh no clothing but uh her skin is now all these sort of small interwoven chitinous plates um seems to have 
fairly extended uh, talons uh, claws on her uh, on the ends of her fingers um, and her bug eyes are now way more faceted than they were and way bigger and she doesn't really seem to have eyelids they're just these massive like bug eyes now uh, more so than subtly uh, how they used to be uh, and uh, she's gonna look to you Vaz and just say where are they and you can see that she's starting to look over your shoulder, hearing the fighting. Uh, Vaz, Vaz sort of just very slowly sort of like hook her thumb, like, I presume you mean the people that... Yeah, there. They're there. Uh, Bulvary is gonna sort of like drop into an awkward squat, uh, in front of Bernard, sort of nuzzle him, I guess, would be the way to describe it, uh, sort of left and right. And then, uh, and then let out a really pronounced hiss and like sprint onto the wall on all fours and take off towards the main chamber. Baz is gonna just like slowly nod like, okay. Not really sure what the fuck that was. Uh, and then realize he's alone in the chamber and just be like, fuck's sake, and charge out after. <laughs> cool. So uh, we'll say the, the two sides to this fight are slowly pushing together. Uh, Jan, you can see over your shoulder, you've taken these hits. Yeah. Uh, you know, your party is sort of converging as uh, is the rest of the resistance. Um, more and more of these uh, these constables are pouring into this chamber. You can see off to the side, you still have access uh, to the, the hovel where Tempest has, has hidden the Oracle and the boy and has the bro squad maybe there to defend uh, till when he gets back. Uh, and you all sort of hear this sort of piercing shriek uh, as Bulvary sort of leaps into the air from the entrance of this tunnel, diving headlong uh, into one of the... Uh, you know, one of the groups of these constables and just starts massacring, just thrashing left and right. You see limbs and sprays of blood uh, as her talons, uh, an extended mouth that comes out of her mouth, her tail with a blade on the end of it, uh, just the full works uh, goes uh, goes berserk uh, among those ranks. Jan, you notice that, like, she is killing everything around her uh, and you see her kill a couple mutants, not really thinking. She's mostly steering it or steering herself towards the constables, but okay. there needs to be a buffer zone because that's not under control at all. Okay. Um, so we'll go back to uh, Jan. Yeah. Um, so I think Jan kind of shouts out, can we get us out of here? To, you know, towards groups of his friends. Um, so probably like Vaz, if you can shout at him and see him. Tempest and Domino, mm -hmm. like the uh, Ada, the, the thinkers of the group who aren't currently. I guess not Ada because Ada's massacring a potato right now. But um, anyone who has the ability to do Numenera stuff, like we need to go, uh, and he's going to move uh, as well to help protect the Oracle uh, with Tempest. Fight, cool, fight. So I guess like... Yana's little kind of contingent of people who might follow him around and help him fight. People. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So Yana's sort of like shifting strategically uh, to protect the Oracle and the boy, or at least mm -hmm. the entrance to that chamber. Uh, still engaged in this fight, uh, so roll me another d10, uh, and you'll split that between might and speed. All right, better than last time. I'm running dangerously low, though, and I think it's pretty quite clear to uh, cool. those around him. Yeah, so Jan's got sort of like blood pouring down the one side of his face, and his one arm isn't, you know, as uh, usable as it used to be. <clears throat> um, it's not a twenty-three. Now is not my day. <laughs> yeah, we'll say we'll say it's like the twenty-first or something. Yeah, it's like, like two days oh, time. We had two, two days. days. <laughs> two days. <laughs> you, like you realize that this fight won't last two days. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let's get out of here. So I shout uh, at the thinkers to get somehow exit or Numenera. Shadow Realm out of here. Cool. All right, uh, we'll go to uh, Tempest. So first off, hit me with that D10 uh, for the ambient damage in this uh, mass battle, uh, and then give me your move. Four. So Tempest is holding his own, but yeah, I'm going to do what I did back on the ship. I'm going to use uh, 
muscles of iron to go grab the oracle and uh, the uh, the boy and start positioning myself near Vaz with the idea that he's going to open a portal for us to uh, blink out of here. Cool. Um, all, right, all right, sounds good. Uh, Vaz, if you've waded into this uh, battle, just give me an initial oh, aim. Yeah. Vaz, Vaz, Vaz will like see that Yan's getting his ass handed to him. And Vaz will basically like, he'll come forth, uh, like put a hand on Yan's shoulder, like pull him back. So Vaz is now between him and these motherfuckers. And he's just going to start cleaving in big, heavy swings through as many of these guys as we can. Uh, D10, yeah? Like for, like for real can smell potatoes right now. Like, smells really good. <laughs> or pasta, maybe. Hmm. Cool, so Vaz, you're spending this round at least uh, just in combat, just to help protect Yan? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm going to... Well, like... I don't know how long I can hold this open. I need to know... Basically, we need everyone together who's going through this portal. So you guys coordinate the... I'll do the, I'll do the jump, but until then, like, I can probably... Yeah, I think, we, I think we gather with Tempest, the boy, and the Oracle. Yeah. Cool. Uh, all right, so we'll go uh, Domino and Ada for your round. So uh, Ada, give me uh, an ambient, uh, we'll say only a D6, because uh, you're like on and scaling this robot, uh, so you're not quite as stuck in the thick of the melee uh, among all these constables. So give me a D6 ambient damage, uh, and then describe how you down or fell this robot, because it's the second round now. Uh, I got a, D a two. So just two damage to, to which pool? Uh, strength or might, whichever your yeah, choice. your might, might or speed. You can split it up one to one. You can do two in one gotcha. of them. Okay. Um, I, I, I finally, I, I, I disassemble like leg. It drops down to its knee. Uh, it's on its hunches, and and I'm, I'm just grabbing at these these wires, ripping them apart as I like let go of my other hand and no longer need the hold. Kind of like swing around to the cockpit and pop off the cockpit. And uh, I grab this, um, DJ, what am I doing? this membrane and to touch him, let me And I just start stabbing it with the Thanks, spear buddy. head that I had taken off. And I, I start carving its face and I eject it from the cockpit. And I throw it on the ground right before the mech itself actually slams on it and mashes its remains. More of a hash Love cut it. or a Julianne. No, just like <laughs> open was just, that little bit. <laughs> skin on mash. Out. Yeah. All right. Cool. Uh, it's, the, it's the fruit ninja of robots. <laughs> and uh, and Domino, you've activated <laughs> Domino, you've activated the uh, the sort of reddish smoke, uh, the sort of combat. Uh, what did I describe yeah. it? What's it called? Uh, so I deleted it. It was a cipher, uh, but it was uh, <laughs> basically it's a red a red red smoke emits from me, and everything gets, everything mist. in yeah combat mist. Everything cool. in there gets plus two energy. Um, and so basically he has his arm blade out and in place of his shield, uh, he just has no hand like Mega Man. Uh, and he's running through <laughs> this crowd and he's just blasting people with his hand and chopping them with his other hand. I'm picturing uh, like the, the the TV race of people from the Saga comics, if anyone knows the reference. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah that's like that, but like with the energy sword, dope. Yeah. Um, cool, all right, so give me 1d10 ambient damage, but otherwise you get to hack and slash and uh, hold these constables at bay, blasting away with your energy. Seven damage. Cool, so distribute that to might and or speed. Uh, and so now, uh, yeah, we'll say that this, this fight uh, continues to push uh, closer and closer together. Uh, you're now sort of within 30 feet on either side. Uh, the constables are starting to sort of circle around to cut you off from the lake as well. They seem to be concerned about you getting to the lake in some way. They're trying to curve that way rather than to stop you from getting to these side chambers. Uh, so they've now sort of formed like a semicircle uh, and are still sort of pinching and surrounding uh, from the left and the right. Uh, I guess Jan uh, calling out the instruction. Now would how, be, now how would be... close are we all together? At this point, are we close enough? Yeah, I'd say oh, as yeah. a party, you're all within like 20 feet and there's probably, I would say like 60 of your revolutionaries who are also like definitely within earshot and not yeah. totally tanked or engaged there's little pockets throughout this chamber but yeah i i raised the the flag the flag of yan uh and uh <gasps> and i say to me and then i kind of like 
look at Yaz. Uh, Yaz, God, let's both. Yes. That's, that's, yes. that's me and you. Yes, <laughs> that's, our, guys the please tell, please that's our ship yeah, name. Yeah. No, that's our child. <laughs> we Wait, play him CA together. Him. I um, I shout no. Um, for like, let's just get the fuck out of here. I'm calling as many people as possible towards me. Trying to get everyone in because those I left behind are going to die. Okay, um, from what I understand, the uh, like I've taken, for example, like the tesseract, and I've got that back on my back to power my weapons. Um, can are we retreating onto the island that the oracle was on? No, they've Just cut you off from that. Uh, okay. Yeah, I think Jan was ordering you to open the. The shadow thing, which I'll presume that you know how to use, given that it was an unidentified cipher, uh, it was identified. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay, cool. Um, in which case, um, Vaz Vaz is just gonna like grunt and uh, like put his glaive, like stab his glaive down into the floor for a second, like backing off a little from the front line, uh, and he'll sort of like look at his hands. And start to like pour this uh, this this smoke out, um, but it it sort of obscures people, but doesn't. It seems to be sort of uh, seeping color from them uh, all around. As like Vaz loses a lot of his color, and everything around him starts to sort of like drain of color as well. Uh, and Vaz starts to like it looks like his tape is really doing a number on him because this is not his kind of. Deal. This isn't what he does. Uh, uh, Baz, you can also take an XP. Oh. Uh, <laughs> conjuring smoke from a shadow realm. Uh, this cipher that you thought was just something Ada gave you. You realize that this is the smoke that you've been running from. In some way, there's a connection between what's been chasing you and this realm you're going to. So describe how you'd like to open this portal, but your might pool gets to go to zero. You realize it's Smokey the Bandit that's been after you this whole time. Oh, fuck. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> I've, just, I've just taken 16 might damage. Um, so, so you're, you're conjuring of yeah. this portal, you're holding it open. You know, it's not an immediate, but we'll say to hold the portal open for as long as you can is literally draining it just yeah. from you, not just this cipher, uh, because you're about to go to where this smoke comes from. Oh dear. Okay. Um, so Vaz is that like. That was the most stand- British thing I've ever heard you say. Best oh dear. English reaction. <laughs> oh dear. Oh dear. Oh dear. I'm afraid you're going oh to die. Oh you bother. Your tea when you said that. Oh dear. What a what a bother that'll be. What a spot of bother we've got ourselves here. <laughs> oh dear. Touch under the weather today, aren't we? Yes. Yes. all that. <laughs> Find a milk for four. It was just perfect. <laughs> pip pip, old chum. Well. <laughs> It had a bit of a Welsh so, twang to it, too. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I was trying to explain what that was to Mitch earlier, and he I was just like, you know, oh, they felt cheap. It's all good. <laughs> so, um, right, uh, like, yeah, so uh, Vaz is sort of like summoning this, uh, this energy. He's sort of like, he's got his hands uh, out to either side, uh, and he's like balling his fists. He's quite clearly in a lot of discomfort. And then you will watch as all of the smoke sort of around him turns to sort of like pillars. Uh, and there appear to be sort of like five of them almost equally spaced around him. Uh, but there's like a gap in front of him. Um, and uh, you will see like this shimmering portal appear in the gap. Uh, and then sort of like, it's not like a pentagram or anything like that, but these columns of smoke get his attention uh, and he looks uh, to them and as he does, they start to close at the tops as the floor around him brings up smoke and it's like this giant grasping hand finally has him and is now closing its fingers around him and he will just scream, get through the fucking portal! And then it grabs him, and Vaz uh, is gone. The portal is there, but Vaz is entirely obscured. By Get the through the fucking what? What? Oh bother! Oh dear! Oh, he says just before the tentacles. <laughs> what? <laughs> Get in the fucking! Oh dear! <laughs> oh, oh well, he appears to have cursed. <laughs> All right, so Vaz uh, gets pulled into this portal. 
as he creates it. Um, Jan, you're going to go last, uh, but we Thanks. will go to Tempest, Domino, and Ada. So, uh, Tempest, you said you were triggering Muscles of Iron. You've got the Oracle and the boy. Um, yeah. Final instructions to the bro squads to come with Just, you or to uh, defend your back? Yo, uh, hold them back and come through if you can. And if there's any of the bro squad down, I grab them. If you like Gil or some of the Santino brothers or any of them are, are down, say, I grab them. If I'll you get a minute, feel free Gil. to pop by. I mean... <laughs> Uh, you can uh, you can save Gil. Okay. So we'll say he's like just taken like a massive energy blast to his leg. Uh, so you yeah. can see like his bone right through up in his thigh, so he's you know hardly able to stand. Uh, so I grab Gil and we I sprint through the portal with the Oracle and the boy because that's my mission from Draken. Cool. Is Draken around? Uh, you yeah we'll say you see her in the melee so she's involved in all of this fighting uh, she seems to be trying to make her way towards Bulvery. Um yeah I mean I just yell to Draken and in case she doesn't know Draken through the port come to the portal and then cool all right uh, we'll go to Ada or Domino next well go ahead um, I I, I kind of look down at the the mashed mess on the the, the ground and kind of snap out of it and just just immediately sprint towards the portal because I don't know what kind of life it life it has, you know if it, if it's gonna close immediately or if uh you know it's a time yeah, thing. It doesn't get out much. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Yeah. All right, so Ada uh, leaps through the portal. Domino. Uh, who's left? Uh, so it's just you. you and Jan from the party. You can see Drekken is making her way to confront Bulvery, who is still in an absolute rage, uh, not discriminating who she's attacking or sort of brutally uh, massacring. Um, Drekken's activating all these gadgets and doodads again, and she's sort of the Batman-esque uh, uh, sort of figure. Uh, there's probably 50 or so of the resistance mutants sort of within your bubble. And then there's like pockets all throughout this chamber from those small side entrances. So there's probably still, you know, hundreds of you still in here, max only 60 who are anywhere near this portal. Okay. Uh, so Domino is gonna get to close enough to the portal uh, and then he's going to make a stand and attempt to get, actually is, is Bulvary easily identifiable as Bulvary or does she look um, so different? Uh, I'm gonna say, you never went and saw the cocoon. Right. You never put together that Bernard's dead or anything like that, so you just think it's a monster, uh, okay. really. Yeah. Uh, then he doesn't do that instead, because uh, he doesn't have any bonds with his Grey Warden, and he's going through that portal. Cool. Domino's through. Uh, Jan Ehrlich, last and always least, as mm. far as he's concerned, you're doomed. So I'm going to let you roll... 1d10 and that's how many of these 60 are going to be able to come with you through the portal before it closes like there's a serious part of me which was thinking Jan might stay behind here and let the others go through and then just stay free of them cool Oh so man, that's so tough. I don't you, even know. you try to make this stand, and maybe at some point Jan does like try to insist that someone else go, mm -hmm. and you see like the looks in the eyes of all of these other mutants, these these resistance fighters, and they sort of refuse to hear that from you because they know that you are more important and that you're not finished yet. Uh, you know, someone has to go and fight the consul. Someone has to do something about this massacre, uh, and they're not gonna let you tell them that they can't die for their leader. That's why they're here in the first place. Um, so they sort of push you back on that. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe even you know what we can say, take an XP, uh, give it to somebody else. Uh, they don't mm -hmm. allow you to stay. They physically throw you through this portal. Um, and you, you manage to, to like bring a couple of them with you and that's it. Sure. You have to die. You, you have to let them die so you go on to for exactly, like, that makes sense. This is just mind, I, I, mindless violence. Fun, fun fact is, yeah. I looked it up. Every other XP I get to take, so I'll take this one and the next one. I'll mark it down. I can't take next one, so I take it. Um, <laughs> and I, I kind of look them in the eyes as they, as I'm kind of going into the pod, and I say, "I'm sorry, brothers," and then I <laughs> zip away. All right, so we find ourselves uh, as this session ends off in the same chamber 
the secret underground lake underneath the city of Seda that the resistance has been growing in and using as their hideout. The party has sort of fallen through. You can see Vaz on the ground. You know, everyone's kind of in black and white in this shadow realm. Um, but Vaz looks the palest. Vaz looks sort of st like starched white um, as he's lying on the ground, kind of gathering his breath, uh, recovering. Tempest has charged through and is sort of cowering over the bodies of the Oracle and the boy. Uh, and Domino and Ada are just standing on guard at the ready. Uh, the portal closed behind you. Jan, maybe you're sort of screaming after the men and looking left and right because you're all now in the center of this fight that is still happening and you are all seeing the shadows of this fight continue as you're literally side by side as you watch the rest of these mutants get massacred um as you sort of witness the shadow the shadows of them playing through what's actually happening in the real world and you're not able to do anything maybe you know jan you're frantically trying to swipe at some of these cards and your weapons just go through their shadows uh because they're not actually there and you're just seeing their reflection um can you see what happens to Draken and Draken and Bulvary? Uh do you yes, you're, your call. So how do you think Tempest would react to like you can still sort of hear the muffled noises of the fight. You're surrounded by, you know, all of these people, you know, walking through and around you, uh protecting the Oracle and the boy. Um yeah, we'll say that as the fight dies down enough, the last two who are really in the fight, uh of the non-constables, the non-officials, are Drekken and Bulvary. Bulvary is just continuing to slaughter through them, breaks her way off into a tunnel and is chasing after many of them that are now fleeing. Uh, Drekken does get downed uh, and she gets sort of swarmed and shackled and she's unconscious and they take her away. So Drekken gets uh, taken away, uh, captured and Bulvary Bulvary just manages to continue on her rampage into the tunnels, whatever that might mean. Uh, Tempest just lets out this huge primal roar, and I'm sure in this cavern it echoes pretty good. I, I won't do it because I don't want to blow people's ears out, but, you know, just, you know, true full-out displacer beast, you know, roar of just frustration and anguish and you know why why did all these people have to die and you're gonna notice that this enormous roar some of the shadowy figures of the constables that are all like you know trying to attend to their men that are wounded you know the fight is dying down you can still hear uh, spurts of it uh, throughout the, the sort of perimeter of this chamber but the central you know where that portal was is, is mostly been mopped up um, like the shadows turn their heads like they hear you somehow or some echo of that noise uh and it sort of makes them uncomfortable uh but they do a quick shoulder check to make sure that you know they didn't forget someone they didn't forget to you know finish off a soldier or, or uh, whatever else we will avenge them and i actually probably one of the first times i look to yon and say show us Show me how we win this and make them pay. Yeah, and just nods. And then, however we leave this place, it's like, we're getting the fuck out of here. Yeah, so this, uh, as far as you know, this is a, a perfect mirror uh, of the world that you just came from, except it is inhabited by shadows. Uh, and you know to be wary of creatures who call this plane their home who you would only know of as shadows and stories in the real world so like the boogeymen the weird mm. monsters that no one believes exist maybe they exist here and it's the shadows that you're seeing in your world um so presumably you'll have uh otherwise unfettered access to uh to the palace at least that's what brogdon seemed to suggest yeah so i think jan says is he nods at tempest and say come we have a palace to burn down. Uh, um, before we go anywhere, well, that's the thing. I've got, I've got, a, I've got an oracle and a boy. <laughs> well, uh, it's the end of the episode. I'm saying something cool. And dramatic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Yes, yes. To the palace. 
But first, we may s rapid. make a stop at the daycare center and drop the kids so off. Cool. <laughs> Oh dear. I mean, the island's still here and everything, so I mean, oh dear. I actually probably take the Oracle back out to the island because I know there was some connection there. Does she seem to connect with this island as she was connected with the other? Uh, the I'm, Oracle... I'm, 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 this is me throwing spaghetti at the wall. <laughs> yeah, uh, no, and it was, it was a well-guessed throw of spaghetti, I suppose. Um, <laughs> If, yeah, if you take uh, the org, you know, we'll say everyone's recovering. Vaz is going to need a minute in a yeah. big way uh, before he's able to move on. What, what you're saying is Squall uh, just passed uh, DC. Vaz is going to take an XP and, uh, <laughs> and, and take so 16, 16 so speed damage, too. Yeah. You didn't make it yeah. vertical. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, Vaz. <laughs> Actually, your left leg didn't make it through the portal. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm going to replace take, it with an M16. Just so you you take the, the, the oracle over to uh, the shores of this lake. Uh, you don't even need to get to the island uh, before you realize that she seems much more cogent. She's stopped muttering. She's stopped trembling. She's stopped uh, sort of like twitching, looking left and right. Uh, and she just sort of looks up again. Her She has no eyes to see with because mm -hmm. of the scars. Uh, she just sort of like looks up she feels her face and and just says oh my god where am i tempest just you're on the other side a, a mirror to where we lived and were, were but you're on your island you're where you where you made your home before? No, no. What what, what happened? Drekken said she would keep me safe. What happened to can my I, face? Can I say something out of character? It's just hit me. Sure. Remember the crazy old guy that the the, the, cra the crazy guy with the, who pulled his own eye out and everything like that. He said he was. He was uh, the brother of the Oracle, mm -hmm. and then the or and they Drekken said no. What if he's the brother of the Oracle here? Dun dun dun. dun, dun. <laughs> um. So yeah, she says, "What what happened yeah, to I, my face?" You, you're as I've always known you, but Drekken, she is she is not here. She did not make it through to this side. Do you still have your second sight, your 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 premonitions, your your knowledge of beyond what you can see? Do you know what I'm what? referring to? Second, no, no one. <laughs> this is wrong. This is. No, Drekken said I'd be safe. I, I'm the consul's wife. Ba -na -na. That's what we'll end. Oh, oh, you son of a bitch. Bye. Uh, okay, bye. I'll see you next week. <laughs> <laughs> okay, see you. Bye. 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 We'll just end with, with Squall's face. Oh. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Bye. Close up. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Ah, fuck. Well, uh, guys, that's all we're wrapping up tonight's episode. If you enjoyed it, let us know uh, in the chat, please. Hooks and plugs. Yeah, yeah, yeah please yeah, do. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jesus. Yeah, Will, it's on you. Yeah, all right. Well, if you enjoyed okay, the show, hit that yeah, follow button. Just, Join us. Playback. Yeah, yeah. My face is pretty good on that. Um, <laughs> so, if you enjoyed the show, hit the follow button. Join us. You can see us on again tomorrow. Tomorrow's well, Tuesday. You're you're not. Yeah, you're muted. Oh yeah, no, I muted on uh, on Zoom, <laughs> but on stream, I, everyone can hear me. So we can't. We're all confused. Ah, it's okay. <laughs> like take it away anytime, Will. I'm basically not talking to you guys anyway, so it's all right. Oh. <laughs> Assume all times, Mike. I'm not speaking to you. Yeah. Um. But yeah. Um. Follow all like this stuff. Let's do hooks and plugs. What do you think of tonight's episode? Uh, let's go around. Let's start with Mitch. What do you think? That was good. That was good. That was good. Uh, it takes, uh, takes a lot of building to make for good moments, so it's always nice when you get a session where there are some big moments. Mm -hmm. uh, don't worry, folks in chat, uh, there are at least three more biggins uh, in the rest of this season, so 
uh, it doesn't stop getting exciting from here. We're just getting started. Yeah. Cool. Uh, um, and encounter Mitchell. Yeah. Sweet. Sweet. Um, Mike, I guess. Yes. Yeah. Uh, you can find me at Omni Gaming on everything. Uh, encounter no, encounter Eeyore here. Uh, exclamation point Eeyore in the chat. Uh, we it's play some D&D on Tuesdays and Thursdays over on my channel. So uh, if you like more of my nonsense uh, and uh, just want to see more of Josh's hatred for me on my channel, uh, feel free to come by and I'll fill our streams. <laughs> oh, yeah. Awesome, awesome. Uh, Tall school. Uh, I'm Tall Squall. You can find me as Tall Squall on most all social media. I run a, a D&D campaign on Saturdays on my channel, which uh, is called The Vice at noon. Uh, and uh, we do run our channel for charities. And this month's charity is the Lamb Foundation, which is looking for a cure for a, uh, a lung condition that uh, affects women of childbearing age. Uh, lots of uh, new uh, knowledge needs to be spread about this because it does affect uh, people and it's pretty something that we really uh, hits close to home for a couple members of my cast so just want to spread the word uh love for you to stop by or just literally come by and click on the link so you can learn more about uh this condition that is affecting folks uh out there in the world sounds... and thanks yeah oh yeah cool cool uh trainsy uh i felt <laughs> like all the torturing and just information that we gathered was really just pooped on by the end there. I, I don't really know. <laughs> <laughs> all of the information. <laughs> kind of have like all of the assets in one area as well. And it, it, it happens to be in this, this questionable door gateway that's in between the evil place that we're venturing and, and the reality that we just came from. So I'm just like, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We all so, took an XP yeah. there in the end, I think. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, you can find me at um uh Transy Transy TV here on Twitch. I stream seven days a week. Mondays on encounter, we do fall games on Friday. Other than that, we play a lot of Warframe Mech Warrior character Cool. Can cool. I put your ticket? Yeah. Um cool. Um and last but not least, Josh. I, yeah, I'm super pissed off because like I know Mitch is really good. I did. I don't know about you guys, but I didn't even. My mind never even went there. Uh, in, in or out of character, so yeah, that's fully oh. like. I feel like I I did want to mention at the beginning of the episode. I was like, are you gonna talk about like where his wife went because I feel like that was kind of a big deal and it's been really sort of brushed under the. Case. No, the the important thing about that was twenty three. Let's be honest. <laughs> How old is she? Twenty three. She is my doom. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, yeah, so, um, yeah, well, um, you can find me here Mondays, uh, you can find me here tomorrow as well, Tuesdays, uh, same time as tonight's show. Uh, there's been a little bit of a change with daylight savings and all that crack, and it will happen to us next. Yeah, two Sunday. weeks' time, 26th, yeah. Yeah, so, um, it's gonna be good, it's good, um, but I will also be around on Thursday, which will be cool. Yeah. And other things coming up as well secret things things we can't tell you about yet we want to there are oh god we can't <laughs> yeah oh goodness mm. i have to speak for yourself josh um but yes uh so tomorrow's uh is call of cthulhu run by warhammer 40k off of ben counter which i'm very excited for uh redundant's character died last week so he's bringing in a new one <laughs> and then at 4 p.m we've got imperator back with tool school and josh and louise and speedy and who else did i forget I feel like that might be all of us. Maybe someone else out there. I don't know. But anyway, maybe someone will just turn up and we'll let them in. Uh, but yeah, that's going to be a fun game. Open Legend tomorrow. Um, and of course, in fact, same, next time we play Numenera, we'll be on the front page again, uh, which would be cool. Um, and yeah. then later on next week as well on Wednesday, I think. So pretty excited for that. Looking forward to it. Um, so yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed tonight's show. I know I certainly did. That mind fuck at the end there. <laughs> and a TPK earlier today. Pretty proud of that. So until next time, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed. It's on my social media in case you want to go follow it. And of course, until next time, try not to roll too many nat ones because I want to be here laughing. Good night, everyone.